It's senior day here at Texas Tech. And for quarterback Seth Dagey and the Red Raiders, it's one last chance to put on an aerial show for the Lubbock faithful. Their opponents from Kansas will take the opposite approach. Run, run, and run some more. Hoping to end the nation's longest conference losing skid. Get your guns up. Fox College football is next. Texas and Texas Tech fans have come for the final home game of the season. Tech trying to snap a two game losing streak. Today, inside Jones AT&T Stadium, it's the Red Raiders and the Jayhawks of Kansas. Hello again, everybody, along with former NFL offensive line, Brian Baldinger, I'm Brian Poo. And Baldy, I tell you, you look offensively, these two teams, polar opposites. Kansas, they want to control the clock by running the football. Texas Tech, they want to speed things up, running and throwing the football. So let's talk about who makes those schemes work. Okay, let's, for Texas Tech, if you're going to throw it, you better have a quarterback, and they've got one, a senior. And one of the nation's best in Seth Day. It's a special day for him. I mean, he leads the nation in touchdown throws with 31. He's looking to add on to it today. On a windy day, he's got an arm that can cut right through the wind. And look, it's senior day here at Texas Tech. His final chance to play in the stadium, he wants to get a win. And for Kansas, they do it on the ground. If you're going to do it, you better have some good ball carriers. And they've got one of the nation's best. It's James Sims. Five straight 100-plus yard rushing days, 10 on his career. He had his best day last week against Baylor, 59-yard touchdown run against the Bears. This is a guy that they want to build this offense around. Look for him to get it 20, 25 times here this afternoon. What scheme is going to be victorious this afternoon? We've got the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. The Jayhawks of Kansas kickoff is straight ahead. That game in the Jones, baby, is going down. You know we're going to end with the W. No, for him. College football is presented by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. It is senior day in Lubbock, Texas, and the recruiting class of 2008 out of the 13 high school students signed, six remain, including Seth Dagey, the quarterback, and Cody Davis, the defensive back. Let's check in with Jim Knox, down on the field, Jim factor in today's game could be the win. They're expecting gusts up to 46 miles an hour. Now, good news for Texas Tech right here. Trey Porter, their hardest hitting defensive back, will be back in action today. Sustained a knee injury a few weeks ago. He's back. He's wearing a knee brace. Talked to him before the game. He said he doesn't like the knee brace, but he's going to make up for it with hitting. He'll need that today going against James Sims and company. Ron? All right. Keep an eye on that for us, Jim. 14th meeting between these two teams. Only win for the Jayhawks back in 2001. Kansas won that game in overtime, 34-31, a five-game win streak by Texas Tech over the Jayhawks. You can see that's the best record of any opponent with a minimum of 10 games versus Kansas. Last year, Ron, Texas Tech went to Lawrence, Kansas. They were down 20-0 in the second mm -hmm. quarter before they staged a big comeback. So not to take the Jayhawks lightly today. Stevens and Foster back for Texas Tech once again. As Jim mentioned, a big win kicking with the win. Kansas won the toss. They deferred. And Texas Tech will have the ball to begin play. Seventh in the Big 12 points a game. As far as total offense, 12th in the country. The numbers on Seth Dagey, 69% completion, Baldy. That's yeah. incredible. It is. And he said that last week's loss right here to the University of Texas was the most disappointing of his career. Uh, obviously, his last chance to beat Texas. Everybody that doesn't go to Texas wants to beat him, and so we'll see how he bounces back here this afternoon. They want to get the ball in Sedale Foster's hands early in this ball game. That might be a little bit of a screen pass now. Instead, they throw it off to the left side, and it is caught. And it is Eric Ward. He's our Academy Sports Right Stuff player of the game. About 21 career touchdown catches for Eric Ward. He's their second leading receiver this year. Uh, obviously, opposite the four receivers at that time, they're looking to get him the ball. Daigie going out with a deep out, complete to Torres. 
Now, they, they play at a speed as fast as anybody in college football. In fact, they call it NASCAR speed. Now, three different tempos that they run, and right now, they want to try to fatigue uh, Kansas and the heat here today and the wind as early as possible. Now they go with one of their three different pistol formations with Williams and Stevens in the backfield. Side, it is Jakeem Grant, a redshirt freshman out of Mesquite, only five foot six. Now this play right here, you're going to watch this. This is actually a pass. It's like a shovel pass. So if it is bobble, it takes that away. It becomes a pass and not a fumble. And a whistle. <laughs> One of the things I think that Texas Tech has talked about. The play about. will be rerun. The offense substituted, which allows the defense to match up. It is still second down. So we'll go back to second down. But they want to keep this pace up. They said Kansas really hasn't faced a lot of up-tempo, the style of Texas Tech this year so far. Well, Kansas tries to slow it down. They run the ball. They huddle up. It's complete opposite. They try to get their defense rested if their offense can stay on the field and sustain drive. Kenny Williams now joining Daggy in the backfield. Daggy goes with another deep out. Pass is complete near sideline. Now there you go, Ron. There's a, a pass that Daigie throws that he really drives it through the wind. I mean, he's thrown into the wind right now, but he really steps into it. You can see it's a tight spiral. It's right on the, on the money there. Uh, to one of his best targets there, Darren Moore at 6'4", presents a good size for him. Darren Moore's 51st catch already of the year, and it's third down for the Red Raiders. They need seven. Four-man rush. Daigie, plenty of time. First down, Texas Tech inside the 35, down to the 34-yard line. Right in front of Ja'Cory Shepard. Again, coming back to the football, good skills that time. That's the Adrian Waddle right there running off the field. Their senior left tackle. They're lining up, I mean, he is a special player now. Uh, just a massive, massive <laughs> man. That's got great skill and really the quarterback of the offensive line calls a lot of the signals. He's a big guy and Daggy is in a good rhythm. He throws the trick underneath to Grant and he is going to be stood up at the 30 yard line. Maybe picks up two on the play. Well, you know, Seth Daggy, he doesn't get sacked very much for two reasons. He's got Adrian Waddle protecting him from the backside and he gets rid of the ball so quickly. They only run about 10 to 15 yard patterns, and again they go the deep out. This time, nice defensive play, knocked away by Greg Brown. Well, Greg Brown is their best cornerback, and uh, this is a good break. This is a long throw into the wind now. It's still, it's a tight spiral, but you can see Greg Brown, one arm on Darren Moore, but not turning him. The right arm knocking the ball down. Good play by Brown, and they play their best defense the closer you get to the goal line. That's 10 passes broken up this season for Greg Brown, the senior out of Cedar Hill, Texas. He's number two in the Big 12 in passes broken up this year coming into the game. Another third down situation. And they won't get the first down. Foster, well short, bringing up a fourth down. Once again, they go to this third down problem they had last week. Well, Josh Williams is going to come across here and he's going to make this play right now, just coming right down the line of scrimmage. And they're going for it on fourth down. And Daggy put it up. Has time. Throws over the middle. Complete. First down. Texas Tech inside the 15. Tyson Williams on the catch. Well, that's a good throw by Seth Daggy. Right down the middle of the field. And Williams is just going to come right into the middle. Sit down in the zone. Good read. Nice throw. Low and away from the defenders. Exactly where Daggy wanted to put it. And yeah, they're in the red zone. Will they get that? monkey off their back they had last week versus Texas they have struggled in the red zone the last couple of weeks they go with a draw play inside the 10 down to the nine is Williams last two weeks seven opportunities inside the red zone they settled for four field goals two were blocked in a turnover that's not productive not is it and this is where Dave Campo says inside the 13 yard line is when they play their best because he used the back line de uh, the defense to help Ooh. Looking for a touchdown. That is a touchdown. Grant on the reception. So Seth Daggy throwing his 32nd touchdown pass of the year. Well, Jakeem Grant is their smallest player on the roster at five foot six. Yes, there's hope for a lot of you vertically challenged uh, players out there. 
Jakeem Grant at 5'6 just sticks it right into the smallest, tightest window there. That's a heck of a throw by Dayton. Now we thought that Grant watching him in practice on Thursday would get a lot more reps today, the and they're going to review play it. Of a touchdown is under further review. Grant, known as the speed guy, and Tommy Tuberville likes this young man. Well, look at that throw. That's beautiful. Now, did he get it inside that pylon before the foot stepped out of bounds? Let's take a look here. Looks like he's in right there. Pylon. I got, uh, it looks tough. like that's going to be tough to overturn, it looks like, from right here. Well, he's stretching out. As long as that ball hits the pylon, he's anywhere in bounds. The feet are in when he when he launched. That should remain a score. Well, here's the call. After review, the ball did link the plane of the goal before the player's knee was down. The call is confirmed. Touchdown. So Graham with his third touchdown reception of the year and busted on to kick the extra point. That's a good opening drive, I think, if you're Texas Tech. Just come out, smack him in the mouth to start the game off. And they did it just the way they liked to. They threw it. They ran it one time the entire drive. Buston has not missed an extra point this season. And that stays true. So on the opening drive that took just over three and a half minutes, Texas Tech gets seven on the board first. Daggy hooking up with Grant. When we come back, Kansas will have the football and they answer. Opening drive for Texas Tech. They go 75 yards. They put the first seven up on the board over Kansas. Along with Brian Baldinger, and Jim Knight, Tom Ross Dewey. As you can see, it took them about three minutes and 20 seconds. That is our BMW Ultimate Drive. Yeah, you know, that was Daigie's 32nd touchdown throw of the season. Matt Barkley is second coming into today with 30. So still the nation's best early on this Saturday afternoon. Pearson and Cox set to receive the kick. At the eight-yard line, it is Cox. Up the sideline. Coverage is broken up as he's able to get over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Return of 31 yards as we take a look at Michael Cummings had a good second half versus Oklahoma State got the start versus Oklahoma and Baldy coach is telling us after that game the game wasn't too big for him then now nah, it's just his fourth start he's a redshirt freshman he's uh, you know he's only five foot ten he's got a big arm Charlie trusts the way that he runs the offense right now He's not a great threat to run it, but you have to respect him with the ball in his hands. Well, they wanted to open up the playbook against Can or against Texas. They sort of did. They thought they went overboard last week versus Baylor for what their talent is. And here is Sims. He is the mainstay. Those are some great yak yards. I think he got hit about after a one-yard gain and ended up gaining a dozen. Well, he's a Texas kid. He was suspended the first three weeks of the season. Pearson and Sims are in the backfield together. Right up the middle behind a senior dominant offensive line of Kansas. And if Kansas can stay in his game, they got to do it by melting the clock, playing keep away, and scoring on these drives. Now they get a first down, a little busted play. Cummings has to keep it. And he'll get up to midfield, still make about a yard on the play. This Kansas offense averaging about 12 points a game in Big 12 play. This is what you call a complimentary offense, a style that keeps the other team from imposing their style on you, I'd have to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a contrast in styles, like you said at the very beginning of the show today, Ron. And uh, they, like to, they like to beat you up and hang on to the ball and wear you down running. A second down and eight. Guys just hands it off to the Brennan Butter play again on the sweep. Another first down for the Jayhawks. It's Sims again. Well, Charlie Weiss told us that they've got a great deal of respect for the interior of this defensive line right here. And so they were going to try and work the edges a little bit. And they do in that play. Sims with another first down run. That's the second on this drive. Good job by Randall Dent, the right guard, getting out there and getting to the linebacker. Couple of 12 yard runs already for Sims here on their opening drive. The Tech defense being tested. Straight up the middle. 
another first down, down to the 25-yard line. Sims again. And here are some numbers on him. 131-plus yards in conference games. That leads the conference in Big 12 play. Right He's 176 yards versus Texas ball. And the guy can run. Well, the, the most impressive thing about it, though, Ron, is everybody knows they've got to stop Kansas' running game if you're going to beat Kansas. And yeah. so even though they come in trying to stop him, he still gets the yards. That's what's most impressive. Big drive for the Jayhawks here in the opening possession for them. Keeping it on the ground down to about the 21-yard line. Sims again. He is a total workhorse. You talked about that in the show. How many times he's going to carry the ball? Well, the, Kansas has been good in their opening drives now. You know, Charlie scripts the plays, and he calls all the plays. And, you know, they've had success. Now, when Texas Tech scores in three minutes and 20 seconds throwing the ball, I mean, you've got to match yeah. scores with Texas Tech. So, the driving it is nice, but they need to get from the end zone. And Sims now to the left of Cummings again. Second down and about five. Oops. <laughs> Where's he supposed to be? Now he figures it out. Cummings keeps it, puts his head down. I take that that Sims on the Wildcat. Yeah. And then maybe that's why they couldn't get lined up right. <laughs> yeah. He didn't get a chance to do that very often. See, I, what they're trying to do is get Sims an extra blocker in front of them, keep the line of scrimmage clean. But I just think guys that aren't yeah. used to taking snaps like that, it, uh, it's not the best way to get him the ball. Well, they're, they're trying to what they're trying to do is find different ways to get him the ball because they know that he's going to be the feature ball player. First third down situation for the Jayhawks. Tony Pearson in the backfield right now. Real dual threat, number three. Here he is in the backfield. He is a good receiver and probably the biggest playmaker. He is probably the closest to a dynamic player they have, and he's got it trying the right side. He's got room inside the five. will mark him out at about the six-yard line. You can see that. I mean, he's got a burst, all right? And he turns that corner. I like a fine European sports car. Good job on the outside right here, sealing it. Good job by uh, Jimmy Mundine, or Jimmy Mundine, the tight end sealing the edge, and that's all you need to get for Pearson. And he can pick him up and put him down now. Well, he only had two rushes versus Baylor. Had that elbow injury, missed a couple of games. He is healthy now, and it's first down and goal for the Jayhawks. The straight lead, straight up the middle, touchdown, James Sims. That was equally as impressive a drive as what Texas Tech just did. Absolutely. And exactly what we said, completely the other way, just running it right down the throat to Texas Tech here. Five straight 100-yard rush games we talked about for Sims. The first since Laverne Smith back in 1974. Then he gets his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. Prolago to tack on the point. And we are tied up. Not even halfway home in the first quarter. Texas Tech goes 75 yards on their opening drive. Kansas answers the Red Raiders, and they're in very potent offense. They'll have the ball when we come back. The senior from Irving MacArthur High School in Dallas, out just outside of Dallas, Texas, gets the touchdown, and we are tied up at seven. Very impressive drive by Kansas as they went 63 yards, just under four minutes, but they answered. That's huge. That's huge. And the other thing is the way they did it. I mean, eight runs, and they went right at what has been a very good Texas Tech defense, especially up the middle. They went right at them. They challenged them, and they won. You know, and even Charlie Weiss telling us, Dave Campo, defensive coordinator, that the middle of Texas Tech's defense is their strength, but they smushed them. <laughs> they smushed, smushed, them, in the, they yeah. smushed them in the mouth on they that one. They smashed them and smushed them. You know, we talk about the top of the show, how both approach the game and the play selection this year for both teams. Very, It's interesting numbers here. Well, they're identically different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you just don't see that in college football, you know? But, I mean, for Charlie Weiss... Look, he's playing a redshirt freshman quarterback in his first uh, making four starts right now. He doesn't have elite talent outside. He's trying to figure out a way that he can break this devastating losing streak both yeah. in the conference and on the road. And he's hoping today he can kill two birds with one stone. And Daggy and company go to work. Eight of nine throwing the first 
possession. He has pressure on his backside, incomplete. It's intended for Kenny Williams. Yeah, he gets pressure from Kevin Young on the backside. He looked like he got a good jump. And uh, it's not often that Seth Dagey has to hold the ball very long. In fact, rarely ever holds it longer yeah. than two seconds. Only two sacks for this Kansas defense the last six games. So Dagey goes back to the quick out. Complete over the 30-yard line up to the 33-yard line. And it's Darren Moore on the reception. He picks up eight on the play. Well, you know, Tommy Tuberville has told us that they really missed the tight end, Jay Samaro and the fullback, Omar Antivaris. And both those guys are hurt. Antivaris, the fullback, is out for the season. I mean, they hope to get Amaro back, but they really add a new dimension to this offense. They really run it very well when both those guys are healthy. Third down and short now for the Red Raiders. They try to run, and Kansas is right there to meet him head on. Kenny Williams, nothing doing. Yeah. Alden Tharp coming up from that linebacker spot to make the initial hit. Really good penetration, John Williams. Watch the penetration right up the middle right now. So you got three white shirts right in the backfield with one lead blocker. And that's where Texas Tech has struggled in short yardage and goal line, primarily because the guys I just mentioned aren't on the roster or are not healthy right now. Damon Peterson, Bradley McDougal set to receive Ryan Erks Laban's kick. Talking to Erks Laban in the hotel this morning, he said, Wind doesn't bother him. It bothers him when he tries to drop the ball on his punt. Fair catch is called to the 30 yard line, says it moves the ball around, but the kick, it covers 38 yards. Texas Tech scores on their opening possession, stopped on their second. Kansas scored on the opening possession. What will they do on their second? AT&T Stadium, second highest number of season tickets sold this year, over 32,000. They're going to set a new attendance record for a season average. And the Texas Tech fans have come alive this year. Now Kansas has the football. Good field position, their second possession of the ball game. And they'll try the little sweep with Pearson. This time, Texas Tech's defense is right there to wrap it up. Tony Pearson, the ball carrier. Got all three running backs back there this time. Pearson, Cox, and James Sims all back there. There they are. That's what they've done this season. Be, uh, they could have three guys all go over 500 yards this year. Pearson and Cox should get there before the end of the season. They're one of four schools to have yeah. three 100-yard rushers this year. This time, Texas Tech defense is alive and well as Sims has stood up right at the line of scrimmage. You can hear the pads popping up here. Wow, there's uh, Dartuan Bush at the bottom. You're just going to get good penetration. Hyder right inside right here, their best defensive tackle. And then, uh, you know, just a whole bunch of piling on by the rest of the, the black shirts there. So, rush defense has dramatically improved under Art Kaufman. The defensive coordinator brought in from the University of North Carolina. All the numbers across the board yeah. drastically improved. And now it's third down for the Jayhawks. They need 10. Cummings, not known for passing. Has some time, now he scrambles. Looking for some place to go. Cuts back inside. Great tackle at the 35-yard line by Cody Davis, making his 46 start one of the best solo tacklers in the country. Well, Really, Cummings does a good job of escaping the rush by Dartuan Bush and Jackson Richards, but Cody Davis, the quarterback of their defense and their leading tackler, making his final appearance here in Lubbock, uh, saves the day on third down. Davis, one of Seth Dagey's roommates, believe it or not, at Texas Tech. Both those two gentlemen getting married as soon as the season's over. As Zalek set to get the kick from Gordy. Looking up into the sun at the 30-yard line, takes a hit immediately, falls forward for about a two-yard gain after the kick. Lubbock, Texas, it is windy, it is warm, and we've got a good football game going on with the Jayhawks and the Red Raiders. Thirty-seven left to play in the opening quarter. Now it up at seven. A full day of college football action continues later today, right here on this channel. The Baylor Bears look to upset the twelfth-ranked Oklahoma Sooners, followed by Southern Miss taking on the Mustangs of SMU. 
Our coverage of college football continues today right here on this channel. And the BCS standings in Kansas State, obviously, number two, Oregon three, Notre Dame four, and everybody's already arguing who's going to be left out. <laughs> Still got games left in their arguing. Well, that's the BCS uh, intrigue. Yeah, this is the year that the, the new format has to kick in, especially if those four teams end up all undefeated. Just playing the games in the yeah, final. Yeah, it usually separates themselves that's by the end, doesn't it? Stevens goes in motion. They empty the backfield. Daggy over the middle, slapped away. Nice defensive play. Greg Brown coming up with the top to knock that ball away. That's the second play now that Greg Brown has made on the ball in the air. Yeah, he's a senior as well, so there's not many starts for him to go right now. So he's leaving his best football out here at the end. Second pass broken up for Grant for Brown. He's got 11 on the year already. Texas Tech looking to the sideline for the play. Sonny Cumbie, the eyes for offensive coordinator. Neil Brown up in the booth. They change the play, and then Dengue quick out. Looks for the block. They don't get it. That play was not good from the beginning. Eric Ward on the reception, but didn't get a whole lot of help as Tyler Patman comes up. Well, you're going to see. I mean, here's, pa here's Patman right now. He sees it right away from the inside slot position. So, excellent recognition by Patman. They've got two... Really good corners here, Kansas. Well, Ward's got to go out. His helmet did come off. And there goes Kennard in form. Marcus Kennard, the senior. Now they lose one on the play. Now it's third down and 11. Texas Tech only one of three so far today. Third down conversion. They're 10th in the country coming into this game. Time throws pass caught up to the 30 yard line. It'll be two yards short of the first down. Zuzalek with his 13th reception of the year. Yeah, but that coverage was excellent. Yeah. They're all over him. I mean, really, I mean, Dakey threw it to the open guy, but really, Patman with the second play. Excellent series by both Greg Brown and Patman at the corner positions. Forced their second uh, punt here already in the first quarter. Patterson McDougal standing back at the 35-yard line awaiting Erksleben's kick and I was kidding him today. I said, do you realize how good your dad was? He goes, yeah, he told me. <laughs> Russell Erksleben of the University else. of Texas. Legendary. And Saints and the Lions in the NFL. Fair catch called for at the 38-yard line by Patterson. And that's where Kansas will take over. Now, Kansas comes in having lost eight straight games this year. But an 18-game conference losing streak, Charlie Weiss is probably the biggest rebuilding job in college football right now. And you can see what they've done as far as conference opponents, and they are four better than the next one with a long losing record in conference play. Yeah, and it's not any better on the road, too. They've got a long road losing streak as well, and Charlie's hoping one of these days, whether it's today here in Lubbock, they can uh, get rid of both those streaks, you know, and start building here for the future. And Cummings, he is going to be dropped back at the 23-yard line by Dartuan Bush. Well, I like Dartuan Bush. I mean, he is a solid, compact player coming off the edge right now. Like, he reads the, uh, the option right there, the read option coming outside. He's not fooled by any of it. But an excellent athlete, great body control. I think he's got a future <laughs> at, at the, at the yeah. next level. Uh, you know, he's still got another year left, but he's a guy I think that people are going to cover. Just his athletic ability and excellent technique. Really good with his hands, good with his eyes on that play. Fourth sack of the year for him. Sims and Pearson now joining Cummings in the backfield. Straight ahead running by Pearson. Not a whole lot. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Thanks a lot, guys. Let's hop right into the mix. Our first game break of the day. Ready, Mark? Texas and Iowa State and the Longhorns making it look easy, Marcus. Look at that job by the Texas old line blowing a huge open in the middle for Johnny the Great to run through. We'll have more on Daryl K. Royals passing a little bit later. But right now, back to Ron and Brian. All right, thanks so much, Kevin Frazier. I tell you, those of us that had a chance, and you, just like me, have been around Coach Royal. Yep. Huge loss, great man, special great man. Fan. Special man and huge loss for... All of college football. Cummings, he's going deep. He has a man, has a 
to step on the defense, but it will fall incomplete. Pass intended for Tuzilli. They like this Andrew Tuzilli, just the sophomore out of Butler, Butler, New Jersey. He's big, got speed, but he says he disappears in games. Well, and he disappeared on that because he kind of slowed down yeah. on that. That was a straight go route. And I don't think he think, thought the ball was going to be thrown to him. And when Cummings cut it loose and hit run full speed, he may have been right underneath that ball. And now Doherty's going to have to kick it away again. Zuzalek at the 20 yard line. Both teams scored on opening possessions and they've just been knocking each other around since. Low snap. Doherty almost went down to a knee. Zuzalek moves up to the 27. He's got a wall on the left side. Up over the 40, past the 45-yard line. 46 yards on the kick, but Zuzalek outruns a few people. Uh, he's just going to see this opening to the side right here, and the senior from Lubbock, homegrown, great kid, academic kid, one of eight, eight uh, brothers and sisters, uh, finishing up his career right where he grew up. Uh, anytime he can get his hands on the ball like that, uh, it's going to be a special day. Right, the, the quarterback right from Coronado High School, right here in Lubbock. We mentioned that Daigie and Davis room together, whereas is Alex also in there, and he says, oh, we'll throw Alex Torres in there, too, because he's always over our place. We can't kick him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a good, good community good house, huh? Yeah, uh, Daigie, a couple of pump fakes. They love that deep out, and they complete the deep out. A first down inside the 40-yard line to Darren Moore. That's a great throw by Daigie. Oh, off the play action this time. He really cut this loose. Good wrap by Moore, a little post out. Gets the separation off of Greg Brown, and the ball's right where it needs to be. Pickup of 19, they go back to work. Deggy on the play fake, rolling. Steps up, throws across the middle. Another first down, Texas Tech. Inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. And they've gone to that speed you were talking about, the different speeds. They have NASCAR, they've got Cheetah NASCAR, and they've got Alert. We've got a Kansas player down, though, at the 32-yard line. That right there is John Williams, the junior defensive tackle. I didn't see what happened to him on the play. I didn't either. Texas Tech throws a lot of cut blocks in their offense. Something that uh, he's got a protective brace on his knee, but they cut block a lot when they want to get rid of the ball quickly. Out of Tulsa, Washington High School, the, the junior. One of the eight alternating defensive line players they use, and he is up. It's a good thing that he's walking off under his own power because I don't think those two guys could help him. <laughs> he's a big man. He's 6'3", 300 pounds to be exact. Charlie Weiss, a big man, he's looking at that play sheet, trying to figure out what he can do on the next series when he gets the ball back. And right now, Dave Campo is defensive coordinator trying to figure out how to stop this tech offense. And Charlie Weiss has made some great comments about this. He says, you know, you can you can simulate the tempo, you can simulate the speed, you can't really do both. No. You're gonna, something's going to come up and get you. He says in practice, they run two huddles. You know, two different offenses going, and the defense just goes from one to the next try and assimilate the speed but on first down Deggy steps up trips and he is down I don't think that'll go down as a sack he's tripped up at the 23 yard line by Kevin Young former That's, big time high school hoop player well there's not many guys that can get to Seth Deggy he gets rid of the ball so quickly but uh, anytime that they can continue to create negative plays and that's what has slowed Texas Tech's offense down trying to overcome a five-yard loss on that set. And it is now second down and 15 for the Red Raiders. Brewer in a quarterback. Daigie goes in motion, and Brewer keeps it. He's inside the 20. Stutter steps, and he has stood up. We saw them run this a couple of times Thursday and also yesterday in walkthrough. The Michael Brewer, the redshirt freshman quarterback, will come in, and they will put Daggy out as a wide receiver. Who knows what they can do with that? Well, it looks like Brewer's just a, you know, a little bit of, of a better runner, a little better athlete. And so that's kind of their short yardage uh, formation right now and a change of pace, and they got about uh, half of the yardage back on that second down. 
And the first quarter will come to an end. Both teams scored on their opening possession. Neither one has done a whole lot since then. But now Texas Tech is threatening. And we'll have that red zone offense by the Red Raiders when we come back. Tied up to seven. Red Raider fans are pumped up. So pumped up between quarters. They had a field goal kicking contest with a couple of students. Student number one. Yeah. Good. <laughs> and then student number two. This is unbelievable, the next one. <laughs> she comes out. Barefoot. Barefoot. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. We're talking Tony Franklin in the Southwest <laughs> Conference years ago with Ow. Texas A&M. Yeah, hurt the toe. <laughs> She's going to have to get her nails done after that. Daggy goes into the end zone, floats it up, touchdown, Texas Tech, Tyson Williams. And Tyler Patman never saw the ball. He never turned around. 17 he, yards, you're right, Baldy. He had no clue where the look ball at him. was. He's shaking his head. Daggy threw it right over his head. He never turned around for the ball. Look at this. I mean, he's just looking at the man. But, I mean, that ball, I don't know how he got it in there. He's trying to kick him and slap him. And... But Williams will take the touchdown catch. That's his first touchdown catch of the season. You know, Dave Campo told us a couple of weeks ago prior to the Texas game is the extra point is good. He said the question is that they're not playing hard, but at times they're just not playing smart. And that was that was just fundamentals there, though. you got to find the football. Well, you got to find the football, but if you're going to turn to the man, then when you do see the ball, there's still time to strip it out of the hands, knock it loose. He just seemed frozen by it. And look at Seth Daggy. The, the numbers just keep stacking. That's his 63rd career touchdown pass of his career here at Texas Tech. Good protection right here. Real good job by Ladrian Waddle, the left uh, tackle. Look at this. <laughs> Pat <laughs> can't believe that he thought he had it screened off. There's no way he could get it in there. I've got him face guarded right here. Let's look at where that ball was thrown. So Tyson Williams, his first career touchdown reception, the senior out of Aldine, Texas. Played some at West Texas A&M. That's got to be a throw for him. Yeah, on senior day, last trip here, last game at Jones AT&T Stadium. Nice to get one of the books for him. Kramer Fife set to kick it away. Pearson and Cox set to receive it. Kicking with the win. And he booms it. Goodbye. Let's check in with Jim Knoxmore on Seth Dagey. Jim. All right. Thanks, Ron. Seth Dagey just went through the offensive line and congratulated him. I talked to him before the game. He said a key for Texas Tech today is to get off to that hot start. The last two games, you may recall, against Texas and Kansas State, they got off to an extremely slow start. They played catch up the rest of the way. Right now, he seems pleased, although the defense right now needs a big hold. You know, it's interesting, Jim. He's thrown the ball to 18 different receivers this year. Yeah. <laughs> he gets a lot of guys involved. Throwing to 10 receivers in a game is nothing new. And now the Texas Tech defense that was gassed in the opening possession. This time they stack up sins, but he does pick up two on the play. It's like that opening possession against Tech sort of woke that defensive line up, Baldy. Well, not just the line, but the linebackers as well. Yeah. There's uh, Brandon Jackson. They've got some some of their backups in there right now. Leon Mackey in their defensive tackle. They rotate about eight or nine guys in that defensive front. Talk to opposing coaches throughout the league. Some feel that Texas Tech is vulnerable on the edge. Kansas, their success against Tommy Tuberville and company has been right up the middle. This time the right side again by Sims gets up to about the 29 yard line picks up another two on the play Blake D's coming up to make the stop yeah it's interesting to talk to Tommy and how he's building this program mm -hmm. at Texas Tech he's gone the junior college route you know he's found a lot of good players out of California Riverside Community College he's recruited out of Pittsburgh Pennsylvania Alabama Blake D's is from Spanish Fort Alabama I mean, he's Really, uh, home of the country. Look for players to come to love. It's not easy, but he's getting them to come there to play and getting them to believe in what he's doing. Kansas facing third down. They're one of three this afternoon. Cummings, here comes pressure. Throws off the back of his foot, and that'll be incomplete. Well, he had pressure right off his 
off the edge coming clean right now and he just can't get out here I mean here it is he's got pressure right in his face that time from Trey Porter a nickelback and uh, Tommy Tuberville told us you know last week we played without Porter and Phillips mm -hmm. and Douglas and boy it really hurt us against Texas Doherty's third punt of the ball game Zizalek had a good return the last time standing at about the 32. Texas Tech is setting up for a return the whole way. Well, they are. He tries a little rugby kick, and that is not going to be good. The officials will mark it out at about the 43-yard line. Great field position for Texas Tech. When we come back, Seth Dagey already a couple of touchdown passes today. He's gone over 3,000 yards for the season. What will he do on his next possession? Three straight three and outs for Kansas after they scored on their opening possession. The 28-yard punt gives Tech great field position. Daigie and company going back to work. Darren Moore wide to the top of your screen. Daigie with time goes over the middle. Caught. Eric Ward inside the 30. They'll mark him down at about the 26-yard line. You know, Ron, one of the things that Texas Tech does to give Seth Daigie time, they get extra-wide line splits between the guards and the tackles and the centers. And it really, what it does is creates a lot of one-on-ones. This man over here is special. Uh, Adrian Waddle, he's lined up against Tobin Apurim right now. Really just one-on-one -on -one blocking up front. And Tech quickly picks up the pace again. The out again. Pass is complete. Not, no, they're saying he, he was out of bounds. Remember right now, there's no force outs in football. Yeah, yep. Stepped out of bounds. Didn't get the foot down. Plus, uh, ja Ja'Cory Shepard was there to give him a push. That was Derek Edwards. They're expecting great things for him. He's just a redshirt freshman out of Brenham, Texas. So the ball's at the 26-yard line, second and 10 for the Red Raiders. Kansas showing blitz, and they bring five. Daggy has time, throws underneath. Caught, getting away is Williams. He's inside the 10, down to the five-yard line. Williams shaking a tackle and able to make his way all the way down to the five, a pickup of 20. Yeah, I mean, really just showed great balance on the play, too. Because here it is. Ben Heaney's right there. He's got him. He's the middle linebacker, the leading tackler. But, you know, Williams is such a compact player, 220 pounds. Uh, just very strong legs. And really, you need another guy to get to him in order to get him down. Second trip inside the red zone for the Red Raiders. They're one for one so far today. Peggy looks, looking for his third touchdown pass, and he's got it. Darren Moore on the reception again. Well, he's spreading it around. Third touchdown pass already for Daigie. That's a beautiful throw because really Kansas defended the play well. Greg Brown a little befuddled there going, I thought we had good coverage here, and he just fit it in. Moore is such a big target, though. I Boy, mean, he is. he is long arms, over six foot four, 220 pounds. What a target he is for Dagan. He's got a touchdown catch in eight of the last 11 games. And with that, he takes the lead over his former high school teammate, James Sims, a running back for Kansas. The extra point is good. Seth Dagey is having a field day today. Three touchdown passes on the afternoon. And the Red Raiders open up a 14-point advantage over the Jayhawks. Fox College Football is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Bright stuff, low price, every day. And on your way home, make a late-night foodie call at Jack in the Box. And the Buddy Holly Museum, which is right here in Lubbock, Texas. You get to see all the memorabilia from the late great Buddy Holly oh. right here in Lubbock. You going to sing some songs for me? Everybody? Well, I was, you know, look, it's Don McLean's American Pie. There right you there. go. About the day the music died. Now, the, the ball falls off the tee. We were remarking during the break. 
the wind here has picked up. And, and as Noxie said earlier, it could go over 40 miles an hour today. And it is blowing a lot. And you can see the dust yeah. starting to come in. Yeah, it hadn't affected Seth Dagey at all. No. He's, he's still throwing darts. Three touchdown passes here in the first half. Pearson and Cox say goodbye to the pigskin. And a lucky fan gets a souvenir. Let's go back to the touchdown, Baldy. Break it down for us. Well, I mean, it's uh, it's a classic right here. What you're going to drive is, is just a stop corner against that look, against that zone look that they're running. It's going to open up the window here for Darren Moore. I mean, it's just a great, great route combination against that coverage. You anticipate that quarter coverage down there in the, uh, inside the red zone. They got it. And then, you know, Moore's big body, great throw by the quarterback. And uh, right now, Texas Tech pulled away up 21-7. There was a thought, would Texas Tech have a hangover from the Texas game? I think so far, at least early on in this ballgame, that's been answered. But Kansas having success in the rush game. This time, it's Tony Pearson, Well, 5'8 senior. Yeah, excuse me, Ron. I think that Tony Pearson has to be a big part of this Kansas offense right now. I mean, he's a good receiver. Uh, he can make people miss. He's got top flight speed. He's been battling a separated or dislocated left elbow that's getting better and better, but I think he's got to become a bigger part of his offense right now. He has 26 big plays for Kansas this year, the most of anybody. This time the Tech defense trying to stack up Sims. He's down to the 40-yard line. Jim, what's it like on the sideline now? Ron, I tell you what, this Kansas defense right now, as you see, their hands are hanging down. They're a little tired out. They started the game right with one big hold uh, on defense, but then Texas Tech scored 14 unanswered points right now. They're hoping that offense gets some kind of sustained drive so they can get a little rest right here. One of the defensive players was talking about, keep your heads up, guys. you got to get back out there. Now the offense does have to... Pull on that rope right now, you know, and, and get a score here. Tighten this thing up, give them some rest, and keep this, uh, you know, keep the score within distance. On second down. Cummings hands off, and that's going to be nothing doing for James Sims. I think Noxie made a great point. You talk to anybody that plays teams like Texas Tech, Baylor, uh, Houston, Texas A&M, all the coaches will tell you, we need to do something offensively because our defense needs to get a drink of water. <laughs> you know, we <laughs> need Gatorade. to give them some rest, yeah. yeah. Well, right now, this option, this read option that Michael Cummings is running for Kansas isn't working. I mean, they're not respecting Michael Cummings with running the ball. They're just really just keying the backs right now, not even looking at the quarterback. Kansas facing third down. They're only one of four this afternoon. Here comes pressure. Cummings steps up, rifles the pass. Should have been caught. That would have been good enough for a first down. Omiji could not bring it in, and Cummings gets up slowly. Uh, Cody Do Davis uh, blitzed on the play right here, and he hits him just as he throws the ball. Ooh, <laughs> he hit him. Did that's he? A, that's a smush, isn't yeah. it? That's a that's a smush. Yeah, and. Really, but the ball still should have been caught. I mean, they've got to get something out of the passing game right now. Right now, it's completely non-existent. Gordy tries a little rugby kick. This time, much better than his last one. That was 28 yards. Uzalek. Oh, that's a mistake. Oh, he made a mistake. I think Kansas mistake. got the football. What was Uzalek thinking on that? He knows. He knows that is a major mistake. He's going to say there was interference, but nobody dropped the flag. No. The Texas Tech coaches are talking about it, but it looked like Bradley McDougal came down with it. Zuzalek saying, I was interfered with. Well, nobody dropped the flag. Nobody's calling it. In fact, there hasn't been a penalty thrown in this game yet. You've got to get away from that ball. You'll poison or something, don't no you? No question. No question. Especially up 21-7. And Zuzalek is a senior. He knows better than that. I guess he, I don't know. <laughs> when you're inside the 10-yard line, yeah, you just let that thing go. I yeah. mean, in fact, you just yell like sometimes. The ruling on the field is that the ball was first touched by a member of the kicking team. It will belong to Texas Tech at the 11-yard line. First well, Texas Tech gets a break, so it looks like it was a fumble after Dory's kick, but it was touched first by Kansas by McDougal. So Texas Tech will have the football when we come back. Coming up, Kevin Frazier, Marcus L. will get us ready for halftime right after these messages.
the last play was reviewable, and a head coach can challenge any play that is reviewable. Charlie Weiss didn't challenge that last play, and the replay shows that maybe this ball should belong to Kansas. Yeah, which is just totally mysterious why you wouldn't challenge it, because it sure looked like Zuzala touched it first. And we'll show it to you in a second, but first, Daigie is a penalty flag flies in. Up over the 20, up over the 30-yard line. Here's Grant again, scampering up over the 30. But there is a penalty flag, two of them, as a matter of fact, and they were thrown very early. 22 yards First on the pickup. With an illegal chop block, number 62 of the offense. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal. Replay, first down. Let's go back to the punt, take a look at it again, see if we can break it down. Well, the ball bounces in front of Austin Zuzalek here. And you're going to see his left arm. I mean, Dougal hit, hits Zuzalek, but he doesn't hit the ball. Zuzalek hits Zuzalek's arm first, which would make it a muff, which would make it a McDougal in Kansas recovery there. But you've got to challenge it in order to do it. And once again, there was no challenge. Penalty on LaRaven Clark. So that moves the ball back to about the five yard line. Daigie will throw out of his own end zone. The wow. out. Oh, that held up in the air a long time, but it was caught by Tyson Williams. But I'm impressed here on a windy day like this. Daigie's arm and him being able to throw it right now. Excellent footwork. He cuts that ball loose. Look at that. That ball can't be thrown a lot better. Seeing him live here today, yeah. I, it, I, it's really kind of opened my eyes to what kind of arm he has. He's got some spin on it. Yeah. Picked up 11 on that play. Second down. The quick out. Perfect pass again. Complete to Darren Moore. Already with a touchdown reception today. Rob, watch. He gets rid of this ball like he's getting the ball out of his glove. I mean, there is no pass rush for this. I mean, he's simply playing shortstop and, and getting the ball out as quickly as he gets it. And then it's not a question of how quickly he gets out. It's where he locates the ball once he throws it. That's a great skill that he has. Absolutely. And another first down for the Red Raiders. Deggy on the draw. Kansas is right there to welcome themselves to Eric Stevens. Fans want a little extracurricular. They're not going to get it. Well, you got to at least get Stevens to the ground before that starts. There's a great comeback story oh, for Eric it's Stevens. Still, it's almost a year ago now yeah. that he tore up that knee. Here's the replay again of it. Yeah. He's just happy to be back out there in full speed again. I think they're grabbing his leg and making a wish. Out to the far side. Pass is caught by Torres, and he is upended hard, and he is slow to get up. Torres, another one of the seniors that already has his degree, and he's going to come out of the ballgame. That's a beautiful job of keeping his feet in. Wow, that's a heck of a hit, too, by Lubbock Smith to safety. Wow. And he's got bad knees. He only practices Wednesdays and Thursdays, Torres does. Coming off that knee injury from last season. Daigie. Well, this is methodical. Wow. Totally methodical. Jakeem Grant, the redshirt freshman. I tell you what, I don't know if there's... Now, there's a lot of guys that are going to be talked about for whether it's Heisman or the NFL draft, but I don't know anybody that gets rid of the ball as quickly as Daigie does. An exceptional young man off the football field, huh. second and short. This is carte blanche for him, Brian. Yeah, well, I mean, he's an academic All-American. He uses that ability to process information right now as he changes the play. Already has his degree. Three-man rush. Deggy. Intercepted. Picked off by McDougal. Still on his feet inside the 40, inside the 35-yard line. Bradley McDougal with his third interception of the year. Well, it's called have a penalty, though. He should have had the putt yeah. up for a recovery. Instead, he gets the interception. We talked too nicely about Daigie. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> really? We jinxed him. Only his ninth interception, and McDougal slow to get up. Got dinged up in the Baylor game last week that you did. He gets dinged up a lot because he plays so hard, but he always comes After back. After the interception and during the return, illegal block in the back. Number 33 of the intercepting team. The penalty will be 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Well, McDougal's just playing his safety position right now. He's 
Really? I mean, he just eyeballed that ball the old way. It's one of the few bad throws by Daigie all day. See if we could pick up. Maybe the illegal block in the back. That's the 18th takeaway of Kansas this year. They've done well in that department. And now Kansas in Texas Tech territory. Sorry, Marlon. Pearson trying to exploit that right side. Able to get down to about the 34-yard line, we'll call it. Pickup of about four on the play. Well, you know, on Kansas' offensive line, we've talked a lot about the seniors here, senior day in Lubbock from Texas Tech, but it's a senior-dominant offensive line. Tanner Hawkinson, number 72 there, the left tackle. He's making his 46th straight start. He has started oh. every single game here at Kansas. He's just tied a record for straight starts in a row. He is a horse on that offensive line. Cummings keeps it. Gets down to the 30-yard line. He ties the record by Hesley Hempstead from 91 to 94, the senior out of McPherson, Kansas. You know, you talk to the coaches, they say NFL-type guy. Yeah, well, just not that. But, I mean, look, when you're 18 years old, you come out of high yeah. school, you're not ready to play yet, but he played. And you know he's played hurt. His, uh, his own teammates elected him captain. Uh, he's won 11 games in four years, <laughs> but he shows up every day. You know, he's got that pro mentality. He's the leader up there in that offensive line. A bunch of seniors up there. On the left side. Third down and short. And it is Sims, and he will get the first down. We do have a penalty on the play. James Sims, the That's some tough running inside that time by Sims. Boy, he is he just takes a beating, doesn't he? Well, he ran right into a tree stump. <laughs> <laughs> Personal foul with hands to the face. Number 91 of the defense. Penalty will be 15 yards. First down. Penalty on Kerry Hyder, and that's kind of been a problem for Texas Tech is inopportune penalties in their losses. I like Kerry Hyder a lot. I mean, here he is right now in the middle. I mean, he just stands Trevor Marangeli up, Correction and that frees up the linebacker to step up. First down. Well, you heard him say half the distance to the goal, so the ball is inside the 15-yard line. Ida really is a defensive end, playing defensive tackle, uh, but he's played it really well. He's stout inside. And it is Pearson. Tries a little spin move, dances his way close to the 10-yard line. They need to get Pearson the ball out on the edge where he can really use his speed. That one was to the boundary on the short side of the field, kind of congested. He could make people miss out in space, but you got to get them out there in it to do it. And the ball continues to blow all over the place, but Kansas is threatening. They scored on their first possession. We're pretty much handled ever since then, but now they've got it. Second down, ball is on the 10-yard line. They need to get down inside the five. Play action by Cummings. Rolls, finds his receiver. Brandon Bourbon, and he gets in for the touchdown. Well, the passing game hasn't been really prolific today, but that bootleg, the first of the day, was perfect. A Texas Tech didn't cover Bourbon coming out of the backfield. And Kansas, after the takeaway now, is right back in the game. Well, he had a 55-yard run Bourbon did for a touchdown versus Texas Tech last year. And that was his only career touchdown prior to that one. Number two for Brandon Bourbon. And the extra point, it is low, but it is good. So Cummings throwing only his second touchdown pass of the year. And it goes to Brandon Bourbon. And the lead of Texas Tech has been cut to seven. Kansas's first touchdown pass since the Oklahoma State game. That was back on October 13th. Yeah. <laughs> Bourbon with wow. the reception. Still no wide receivers on the Kansas team have caught a touchdown pass this year. Wow, that's that's remarkable in college football, the way it's played today. And a low kick, and it is Sedale Foster. Check that, it is Stevens. Well, time now for our Coors Light game summary. Once again, both teams starting out, scoring on their opening possessions. But Kansas, how about 58 yards already for Sims? Sims now is in a position. You see Brandon Bourbon with the 10-yard touchdown reception. Daigie with three, three touchdowns in the first half here. That James Sims, though, could have 
He could break two Hall of Fame records, oh. one by Gail Sayers and one by John Riggins. Could both go down today. Could tie Gail Sayers for the number of 100-yard rushing days in a career at the University of Kansas and tie John Riggins' number of attempts in a career. Going to be for fifth in school history. This time it is Dale Foster on the receiving end of a safe Seth Dagey pass. Plenty of time for this Texas Tech offense, closing it on five minutes to play here in the opening half. That's the Dale Foster is a guy that they wanted to get more involved. Yeah. He's a, he was a junior college transfer and a guy that's their returner, punt returner, kickoff returner, trying to get him in space a little bit. Started using him in the backfield, so he hasn't really run the football as a running back since his high school days. Spent some time at Riverside Community College, mainly as a kickoff return and wide receiving kind of guy. Here's Dagan. He looks for Foster. That's just puts down his head, tries to get something out of that 187 pounds. That was another smush right there. <laughs> the smush factor is yeah. three, I think, today already. That Greg Brown's had a good day. I mean, their corners, Patman mm -hmm. and Brown and McDougal. I mean, it's really a, a very good secondary here for Kansas. They haven't given up the big play now. They have given up the three touchdown passes, but nothing over their head this afternoon. Okay, Texas Tech facing a third down. They're two and five so far today. They need seven. They come. Six man pressure. Foster tries to pick it up. Coming on the near side of the wind just caught that, and Eric Ward had no shot. Throwing with the wind. That ball just started to sail, and Tyler Patman, though, was with Ward step for step. Yeah, good coverage on the outside right now. Little double move. A little bit of contact, but they let him play. It's good no call, I thought. That time, Dave Campo sent uh, three linebackers. Six man pressure and forced that ball out of Daggy's hands a little earlier than he wanted to. Good stop by Kansas that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Much needed when you pull within seven. And now Erks Laban standing back at his 16-yard line set to kick it away. This might go a long way with this <laughs> tailwind is. This could be one of his dad's. <laughs> nice spiraling kick. Patterson lets it hit. And it takes a sideways bounce. Somebody better put a hand on it. Finally down at the 21-yard line. Tonight's a huge Big 12 showdown as second-ranked Kansas State looks to keep their national title hopes alive as they take on the upset-minded TCU Horn Frogs. Coverage of Fox College Football presented by Reese's begins at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific on Fox. Well, a couple quarterbacks in the game, Colin Klein, fantastic senior season, leadership, running, throwing the ball a lot better now. Trevon Boykin, you know, taking over as the freshman right now. If he can... Limit the turnovers or not turn the ball over. I think the Horn Frogs have a chance to stay in that one. They play great defense. 99 yards on offense so far for Kansas. Here is Sims, left side, stacked up. Penalty flag is thrown. Well, I'll just say this. Trevor Marangelli, the center, was laying on top of a defense <laughs> lineman who doesn't have a helmet anymore. Holding number 69 of the offense. Penalty will be 10 yards. Remains first down. I think I think he hit that on the head. Yeah, <laughs> I was just trying to describe the end of the play. <laughs> All right, so here's Marangelli in the middle. All right, there's battling. Now he goes over on him. The helmet comes off. Right. Chances are you're going to be whistled for that. He, yeah, a couple guys tripping over him right there. Yeah, you see Marangelli, and you see what they had as far as penalties. Fewest penalty yards, only behind Navy, K State, yeah. and Air Force. Uh, he's been a good leader inside. Been the senior dominant offensive line oh, yeah. there. Zlatan, Marangelli, Hawkinson. First down and long. They try to pitch back to Pearson. Has a little bit of running room. Up over the 20 to the 22 yard line. Pickup of 11 on the play before DJ Johnson makes a stop. One of the leaders on the defensive. Texas Tech. DJ Johnson, Cody Davis, a couple good safeties. This is what I was saying about Pearson. Get the ball out there. You know, draw the defense to coming. That was a two-handed chest pass, wasn't it? That was. It, you'll see that too often. I thought Brendan Jackson was going to knock it down. Second down and eight from the 23-yard line for the Jayhawks. They'll try the right side with Sims. Cuts back up over the 30-yard line. And he'll be about a yard short of the first down. But well, he can finish some runs now. Oh. I mean, he really puts a little wood in there. 
what they used to say about Walter Payton. He'd draw a little blood every time he ran the ball. Watch him put, get north south here. Watch him finish this. Boom. Right into the chest of Cody Davis. He felt that one. Big third down Huge. for Kansas with two minutes and 15 seconds left before halftime. Trey Parmalee goes wide to the left. Why not hand it to your big guy? And they do right up the middle with Caleb Taylor Cox. He's got the first down. He's one of the thumpers on this offense. Well, tough, Cox, tough runner. Yeah, you know, Tox is a, a junior college player. Transfer and 210 pounds, a little bigger body. Good job of just pushing the pile. And really, you know, it's two minutes and two seconds to go here in the second quarter. Kansas wants to play keep away at the same time. They want to be in a position here. Obviously, to score a touchdown, tie this up going into halftime. Well, they only average in the second half seven points a ball game. Not effective offensively in the second half, and a flag is thrown. We've got movement against Kansas. Right to the snap. Ball start. 64 of the offense. Five yard penalty remains. First down. So we talk about no penalties, and they get yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, you get two, but you know, at the same time, the clock is ticking, and they're huddling up here. The clock is not their friend. You can see it running. Under a minute and 40 seconds to go. There's got to be some hurry up here. There doesn't seem to be any kind of uh, urgency to the no. offense at all. Pre-snap penalties. Ouch. Wow, they're taking way too much time off the clock here. Well, they've got six to shoot to, to get this thing going. Cummings tries to set up a screen pass, and they do, but Texas Tech is corralling Sims. And the clock will stop with 118 left. And Sims doing some drawing once again. He was a high school teammate of a couple of players on the Texas Tech team out of Irving, Texas. A little bragging rights going back to Irving. Okay. This time he's drawn with D.J. Johnson out of Austin, Texas. Sims not, will go out. You no, know, after they got the ball back after a stop, they got it at the 36-yard line. So two minutes and two seconds to go. I mean, they've run 44 seconds off the clock, and they've lost two yards. Wow. Pearson in the backfield now with Cummings. They run the option. Pearson's got it. Cuts in. Got a block. Wow. Has a first down up over the 50. Still on his feet inside the 30. Inside the 20 and finally runs out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Well, there's the, that's what I'm saying. you got to get this guy on the outside, on the perimeter. This is where he makes his yard. I mean, there's just option football. Cummings does a good job of drawing the defense to him, and this is what Pearson could do. He's probably the one breakaway threat they have in the whole offense. Biggest run that he's had in a long time. 49 yards on the pickup by Pearson. That is his longest run of the year. Huh? And you can see the big plays last week versus Texas as opposed to the first eight games. And we've got a timeout. It's going to be the called. first timeout of the first half called by Kansas. Timeout shall be for 30 seconds. I think they called that timeout just to get Pearson a rest. You don't want to take him off the field right now. I mean, if, yeah. I mean, if you're Charlie, you want to come back and run the same play. They've run it twice on this series right now. He's rescued a series that looked like it was dead back in their own zone. Tomorrow, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader beginning with Eli Manning and the Giants heading to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals or the Falcons. Look to stay undefeated. They battle the Saints or the Lions Vikings. Then in America's Game of the Week, the Cowboys square off against the Eagles in a huge game for both teams. Playoff chances or the Rams 49ers. Coverage begins tomorrow with the Built Ford Tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show. Noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. How about the Bengals? Last week, they had a deal yeah. with Peyton Manning. This week, they got to deal with Eli, man. <laughs> it doesn't get any easier, does <laughs> yeah. it? That's not exactly what the defense was hoping for. First down and 10 for Kansas. 107 to play in the half. Ball's on to 17. Cummings looking to put it up. Incomplete. Pass intended for Parmalee. He was open. Pass floated on him. Now, well, that's a play that Michael Cummings would love to have back again because it was a great route combination. Parmalee was open. Just a running a post right now. This ball just sailed on. Had plenty of protection, vision, the whole thing. That was a great opportunity to possibly tie the score up. Cody Davis was about a step behind him. 102 to play in the half.
Timeout called Kansas the again. Timeout of the first half called by Kansas. Time Charlie Weiss is going to talk about it again. But it didn't look like they could get lined up correctly. Cummings yeah. was telling one of the backs, I think it was Sims, where to stand. Charlie knows right now, like you mentioned about how bad they've been in the second half. I actually asked Charlie about it over the phone this week, talking to him. He wasn't too happy with the question. Wasn't too happy with my <laughs> <laughs> But he didn't have any answers. Question. He, he just said, look, you know, we're we come out of the tunnel. At that time, last week they had a weather delay in Waco, Texas, and you know, a long halftime. They really didn't play well at all in the second half, but it's been one of the reasons why they can't win on the road, why they, they've lost as many conference games in, in a row as they have, is because they haven't been able to finish games. They'd love to go in yeah. at least tied here at the half, start even in the third quarter. A lot will depend on that man. Michael Cummings, their quarterback. Second down and 10 from the 17. Run the option with Pearson. Left side, inside the 10-yard line. Knocked out of bounds at about the 7. That's a nice look to play. Nice look to play with Pearson in motion. A little flip to him on the outside. This has been his series. This has been all Tony Pearson right now. You see, he still carries the ball in that right hand because he doesn't really mm -hmm. trust that left arm and that elbow that was dislocated. Well, it was good enough to set up a first down and goal from the seven. Clock stopped with 56 to play in the half. Cummings takes to Pearson, throws the pass, Sims can't corral it. Oh, that's a good, that's a well-designed play. Good, good play action right here. Gonna fake it to Sims and then throw it to Sims. Catchable just, ball. Well, you know, it's just one of those plays, Ron, where you just got to squeeze it, look it all the mm -hmm. way in. The most important thing is catching it. What you get after the catch, you worry about that later. But that was a play that they love to have back. Sims had 10 receptions coming into this game. Second down and goal from the seven with 51 to play. They'll run the option. Cummings keeps it. Lunges forward down to about the five-yard line, maybe the four and a half. Now, the ball's going to be on that hash, okay, after mm -hmm. this play. Now, what you'd love to see is that same reverse pitch to Pearson going to the wide side. The wider the field, the more space he has to work with. I mean, to me, I, I don't think that'd be a bad play. And if I'm Charlie right now, I'm thinking I'm in two-down territory. I don't care if it's just third down. It's third and goal. I got two plays to score a touchdown. I think that's how he's thinking. Well, they haven't kicked a whole lot of field goals the last four games. Well, Pelago has won the Chico. And it's third down and goal from the five. Cummings looks, throws, going for the fade round near side. Knocked away, intended for Parmalee. Nice defensive play by Bruce Jones. And they're going for it. Oh, you've got to. Yeah. I don't know if this is your best option, but this is a good play by Bruce Jones. Another one of those uh, junior college kids from Riverside that's come in and really helped lock down the cornerback position. Not a bad shot to Parmley. They are going to go for the field goal. Well, Prolago, you see the numbers on him. His only field goal made, that was 29 yards versus Texas, and they thought that was the game winner. They're marking this at the 13-23 yarder. And the line drive is good. Three seconds left in the half. Prolago gets the field goal, cuts that Texas Tech lead down to four. That was a good drive. That was really good turnaround here. I mean, this was game looked like it was going to run away at 21-7. The interception by Bradley McDougal led to a touchdown. Then the defense got a stop. And uh, for that offense to basically feature Tony Pearson, mm -hmm. go down the field, get a field goal, cut, cut that lead by 10 points. Now you go down 21-17 here at the half, and... Got ourselves a heck of a ball game here in, in, in uh, Lubbock. You know, we were talking about the fact they were taking so long to get their plays going. How much of that could be attributed to the fact they didn't want Texas Tech to get the ball back with a lot of time left? Well, the 49-yard run by Tony Pearson helped yeah. change the field <laughs> yeah. position. It does do that. Yeah. I mean, that's the longest run that he's had all year. Tommy Tupperville probably not too thrilled by defensive performance. And, you know, he brought Art Kaufman in to try and rebuild his defense. And they had played much better than they did a year ago. I mean, they didn't win a game after that shocking win against Oklahoma last season. This will be the final play of the half. 
And still on his feet is Eric Stevens, and he bounces to the outside. And that's going to do it. Kansas has not won a game this year when they've trailed at halftime. They're 0-6. Here's Jim Knox with Tommy Tuberville. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Ron. Coach, I tell you what, uh, you guys got out to an early start, got seven points, and all of a sudden Kansas started running the football. What adjustments are you going to make at halftime trying to slow down that running game? Well, we got to stop their option play. We adjusted pretty good after the first drive. And then, uh, uh, you know, we just didn't tackle very well. They, they're doing a good job on the option. We got to adjust to that. But uh, offensively, we just shoot ourselves in the foot. We didn't make a very good call on second and one. We threw into eight men, dropped to it right to a safety. So we just got to play smarter. We'll be in good shape. We just got to tackle on defense, and play smarter on offense. I appreciate the Thank time. You. Thank you, Coach. Halftime in Lubbock, where Texas Tech leads Kansas 21 to 17. Coming up next, we'll take you out to Los Angeles for a Fox College football halftime with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen right after these messages. couple of minutes it is military appreciation day here in lubbock texas and the guest of honor at halftime was none other than the great rocky blyer he was here for the vietnam center and archive uh institution here at texas tech he was a guest lecturer former pittsburgh steeler purple heart winner honored also at halftime second half still coming up kansas and texas tech red raiders lead it by four Texas. It is a windy, warm day as we take a look at our first half stats. And Baldy, what stands out? Well, just the way that both these teams like to move the ball. I mean, Kansas moves it on the ground. Texas Tech moves it on the air. And just in this swirling, gusty, windy conditions, I'm impressed by how well Seth Dagey threw that ball in the first half. He completed 23 of 29. He threw the one interception. But other than that, I mean, he threw the ball through this wind. He cut it loose. Uh, he was accurate with it. He spread the ball around. I was impressed by how well he threw it. Now we still have a second half left. Once again, Kansas has never won a game this season where they trailed at halftime. They will get the ball first. They won the coin toss at the start of the game and deferred. Pearson and Cox set to receive the kick by Kramer Fife. Looking, uh, kicking with a big win. Oh, jeez. Now, Jim, you talked to Charlie Weiss at halftime. What were the words of wisdom from him? Well, Charlie, believe it or not, Ron said he's extremely pleased the way his team fought back in the first half, was not happy with some of the calls he thought he, on his side, was not good. But he did say in the second half, we've been in this situation before. Now, coming in at halftime, we were trailing just by a couple in the second half. The other team blew it wide open. He said, this half, I'm going to make a call, he said. I go, what call is that, Charlie? He said, just watch me. I'm going to make a call. Let's see if he makes a call here. <laughs> hey. Hey, we'll let you know if he makes a call, Jim. <laughs> we'll see what we can find out up here. Well, he says he never runs the same play twice in a game. This time they go just with a basic pitch back to Sims, and he bowls his way close to a first down. Be about a yard short. We mentioned they started the game on their opening drive. They went for a touchdown. But the rest after that, not so good. No, you see the four straight punts in a row. But, you know, I thought the, really the key was defensively they got a lot of stops. And they right. limited Texas Tech to just 21 first-half points. And so during the game, that was James Sims' 14th carry. He gets stronger as the game goes on. Closing in on John Riggins. They're going to try a little reverse. Here's the play they were talking about. And the reverse will get the first down and then some. Close to the 50, up to the 48-yard line, Trey Parmalee. Well, they don't throw it very well, so they're getting the wide receivers involved, you know, in the re reverse game. Nice job by Parmalee. Pick up a 15 on the play. And I think if you're Charlie, you got to be pretty pleased because you won the time of possession in the first 30 minutes. Well, that's huge. You know, just playing keep away right now. So we'll see. And really, time of possession can be misleading unless you can right. get that ball back right now and, you know, get with the lead. 
On first and ten from the 48-yard line, Pearson left side maybe picks up a yard. We heard Tommy Tuberville at halftime saying, hey, we did a good job making adjustments after that initial uh, drive by Kansas, but he said we still have to do a better job on the option. Well, it was the read option that really changed field position, allowed Kansas to cut that lead a little further at the end of the first half. So I know Charlie doesn't like to repeat plays, but that's a play that's worth repeating. Charlie's like exhorting him here. Let's go. He's looking at the know. clock on. How long are you going to take? Play clock inside of 10. And here comes the option that did so well in the first half. This time Texas Tech swarms, but Pearson's still able to get down to about the 46-yard line. That guy has great oh, ability to stop and start, and that's what saved him on that play. His ability to cut back, looking at his uh, brace, his elbow brace, looked like it just broke. It's dang with me right now. I don't know. You're not coming out of the game right no. now, Pearson. You're in the game. We'll get that thing taken care of. It's a mechanism. <laughs> Fix it. Yeah. We're going to take care of it. Just stay in there. And part of his arm just dangling off the side of him. Third down and five now for the Jayhawks. Cummings, play action, steps up in the pocket, and he is going to take a hit at the 50-yard line. Great pressure put on by Brendan Jackson, the redshirt freshman. Yeah, and really, there's a three-receiver route right now off play action, but Hyder comes in. Yeah. That pocket just collapsed, yeah. collapsed, and now Michael Cummings at 5'10", doesn't see over the line very well. They're excited about a transfer from BYU, Josh Heaps. He's been setting out this year. He's been running the, the scout team, and they think uh, he'll have to beat out Cummings next year, but they think he could really be the future. Zuzalek and Torres back, and they try the low rugby kick again, and it'll go out. It'll be a short kick. They'll mark it out at about the 27-yard line. Well, Brendan Jackson, one of those involved in the sack, says every sack makes him feel like a prom king. College football is presented by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. By Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Whataburger, proud to serve it hot and fresh 24 hours a day. And it's a beautiful day in Lubbock, Texas, albeit windy, but I guess that's redundant. <laughs> So it's a little flat here <laughs> in Lubbock. I don't know. You can see Marina Del Rey if you get up on top of the, uh, yeah. the press box. Seth Dagey goes back to work. An outstanding first half. Did have a pick, but he threw three touchdown passes. Flings it out to the side. This is Sedale Foster. He's got some running room. Penalty flag comes in as he crosses the 40. Only five total penalties in that first half between both teams. And we'll listen in, see what the penalty was after the pickup of 14. Illegal block below the waist. Number 86 of the offense. The penalty will be 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Alex Torres with the block. That's just going below. And here's Torres right here. He's going to go low right there. Just unnecessary. And that's just a safety issue right there. It's a good block. Yeah. It's just illegal. <laughs> Ten years ago, people would give him attaboys and yeah. stickers on his forehead. Exactly. So, you know, you know, Tommy knows he's, it's not how they coach him, going low like that. I mean, there's a position right there just to screen him. You know, you screen in the middle linebacker, Heaney. You do that without cut blocking. So now the ball put back to the 19-yard line. And Deggie, wide open, pass caught by Zazala. He's got running room, tiptoes down the sideline, gets up to the 40-yard line. Pickup of 21 on the play before Ja'Cory Shepard pushes him out. Yeah, he took that right off his shoelaces. Here he is just on an out right now. Low, but for a guy who's, you know, six foot, he went down all the way to the laces. Took that one off the ground. Nice catch. Deggy quickly flips it out again. This time to Torres. Up over the 45 to the 46-yard line. Boy, Greg Brown has been active today. Just defending the pass, making the tackles right now. I mean, really, I think he's having an outstanding senior season. I think Dave Campbell has enjoyed coaching. 
He's one of the players that believes in Coach Campbell, says, I know what he's going to call, and I understand what he's going to call. Now it's second down and four for the Red Raiders. They go to the run game, was not existent in the first half, and Williams doesn't get very much, if any, probably gets back to the line of scrimmage. Holden Tharp, the junior right there. I mean, they've got nothing out of the run game. They really enjoy running three three backs and William Stevens and Foster they don't have 10 yards rushing yet that's not what the Texas Tech offense is built around I mean you go back even in, in coach Tuberville's era oh no you got to run the ball another to open up the passing game well he believes in passing it to set up the run but it hasn't set it up today and they credit Kansas and it's third down and five now for the Red Raiders Deggy empties the backfield they set up a straight pass double pump Deggy looking he's going to keep it he will be hit short of the first down, gets to the 49-yard line before Bradley McDougal comes up. But let's Another, see if they go for it. Well, Deggy's staying on the field. So it looks like they're they're setting up the offense and they are going for it. They're seven of eleven on fourth down this season, 28th best in the country, fourth in the Big 12. Well, they got their big package on the field. They seem awfully confused about what the personnel is supposed to be. This is one of their pistol formations. And the penalty flag. Substitution. Yeah, too many men on the field. Illegal formation. 12 men in formation on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. You know, you saw one of the Red Raiders. I'm not sure who it was. This will force him to punt it. I don't think he's happy with that. No, because th that's just a substitution problem. That is a, a formation that it's an automatic on short yards. It's probably just a name. It could be just something like Red Raider. And you hear Red Raider, and you just automatically make the switch, and they didn't do it. And that upsets the head coach. And all of a sudden, instead of fourth down and short, you're going to have to kick it away because you yeah. need six. I don't think they still have enough men on the field. And they didn't. Yeah, I mean, here's they got a late arrival. <laughs> it might be. Oh, this, this, this is just, yeah. And the fans right below us, they're not real happy right now. <laughs> is, is that what those expletives <laughs> yeah, well, were? Is that what that was? I watch a lot of Cowboy games. The, <laughs> the first is for a false start. However, the, there was a delay of game before the false start took place. So therefore, it would be a five-yard penalty against the offense, and it remains fourth down. So you lose 10 yards in penalties after having fourth down and about one. This is not... Uh, the way the seniors want to go out. That's about as bad as exchange as you can get from fourth and one and going for it to fourth and 11. The good news is Erkslave is kicking with about a 35 mile an hour wind. Yeah. And this one sails. Jeez. Backing up is Patterson. Hits at the five and this is going to be beautiful. Wow. And the market down at about the four and a half yard line. He boomed that one. Erkslaven with a big time kick after a couple of miscues by the Texas Tech team. In Lubbock, beautiful day, and it's a four point Red Raider lead. Kansas with their second possession of the second half. They had 25 yards on their first position. They trail only by four. And the second half has not been kind. So every possession that Kansas has, Baldy, I think, number one, they've got to work on the clock. Number two, they've got to get some kind of points. Yeah, they've got to get points out of the drives. Now, they, this is a tough field position to work with. But uh, there'd be nothing better for a senior like Tanner Hawkinson and Zlatnik and Marangeli to be able to drive this ball on the ground 95 yards for a score. I mean, that'd be a dream drive. Three seniors that have won a combined 11 games in four years for Kansas. So a 59-yard punt puts Kansas with their back to the wall. They go right up the middle with Sims. Up over the 10 after a pickup of five on the play. Solid first down game. Yeah, really solid. I mean, Kansas here has a chance to have two backs go over 100 yards here today. None of that means anything unless they can come away with the win. Dangerous to run blitz against this Kansas team? Well, it is because if you option away from it, uh, you get one less defender out there on the outside with guys like Sims and Pearson. Yeah, now Sims is in the backfield. He gets it again and powers his way close to the first down, and it should be enough. 
10 yards on two carries for Sims. Simmons coming up to make the stop. Now watch, he, he's, he's stopped for a three-yard game. Watch the push by the line. Two good double teams that time. Look at the finish by spinning, turning, getting that elbow down for the first down. Two straight runs right at the heart of the Texas Tech defense. And you pick up 10 yards. I and mean, that's, uh, that's a good day up front for those guys. I love his patience running. That little stutter step he has. First down for the Jayhawks from the 15. Nothing to it. Big time hit. Sims has stood up on that play. That's Hyder. Hyder with a lot of help on the outside from Brandon Jackson. That's Terry Hyder with the first contact. The defensive tackle, he's just stout. Boy, I tell you that Hyder and Jackson combination, just a junior and Jackson, just a redshirt freshman. Yep. You mentioned that they go to Pittsburgh now to recruit Jackson out of a key sport. Yep. Pretty good combination on that one side. And second down and 10 after no gain by Sims. Cummings play action. Hit as he throws, completes it up to the 16 yard line to Mundi. Penalty on the play. Yeah, and I think he will get close to the 25. This is going to be a first down. Personal though. foul. Roughing the passer. Number 54 of the defense. The 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. Bush. Does any defender ever argue? I mean, do they ever not argue? Yeah, really. After there's a, a late hit. I mean, here's, here's Bush here. He's coming up the field right now. Oh, like I'll tell you what. That, I think he's actually yeah. got a case now. You might want to take that one to Judge Judy. Yeah, I think you're right on that. Yeah, I mean, that looked like kind of a love tap. Knock him down. You know, you got to have some, you know, you don't want anybody hurt, but the guy is no. over 240 pounds running full steam. And he didn't hit him with his head. No. And all he did was give him a, a shove at the end. They'll try the right side with Pearson, the short side of the field. Not a whole lot. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. I tell you, that, that right tackle for him, Aslam Sterling, number 77. He's a he's from Nassau Community College on Long Island. Uh, his family was hurt bad by Hurricane Sandy, concerned about him. But I was just watching him warm up. I've seen him all year now. He's lost 35 pounds. He's right. a good-looking athlete. You know, 6'5", 330, kind of not a whole lot of baby fat left on him right now. He's a kid that we're going to talk about in the Big 12 next year a whole bunch trying to turn this thing around to Kansas. Got second down and long. Sims gets about a yard and a half. <laughs> I think you're right on Sterling. It was a right guard, moved him to right tackle, returned to start versus Baylor. He's a yeah. big guy, too. Big, 330. Big man, but moves well. Yep. Um, can pass protect now. Springfield guards New York up in Queens, New York. That 360 is now down to about 330, though. He's working at it. Third down for the Jayhawks. They're just three of nine. We're looking at Hyden. He is hurt. Hyder, he is hurt on the uh, Texas Tech sideline. Third down and eight from the 41. Coming, throwing, far side, incomplete. And a flag. And a flag comes in. Trey Parmalee, the true freshman out of Overland Park, Kansas, the intended receiver. Well, Eugene Nebo was just a little too aggressive there. It's the first time that Cummings really cut it loose down the field, and they draw the flag and they'll get a first down. Another defensive penalty. Pass interference. Defense, number 31. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. So two penalties have moved the ball and helped move the ball to Kansas. Really, Nebo's in great shape. I don't even know. I mean, I know he's facing him, but yeah, he did put his right right yeah. hand on the arm of Parmalee. So that's a good call. Cummings will take it. He'll take the late hit in the end zone. He'll take the pass interference penalty and here's Kansas dropping off their five yard line now in Texas Tech territory and they'll wow. pitch it back to Sims Texas Tech corrals them no gain on the play good block that time by Hawkinson on the outside good cut block see did they get a face bash by Cody Davis oh yeah yeah he got a little face there yeah he Usually you don't miss those out there in the open field. It's accidental, but it's still yeah. into the face mask. Anytime you see that hit spin around, you're going to see a flag come yep. flying Usually in. It's automatic. Second down and 10. Five minutes to play in quarter number three. Kansas has had the ball the majority of the time here in the second half so far. 
Sims straight up the middle inside the 40 down to about, well, they're going to mark him down right at the 40. Brandon Jensen, Jackson again on the stop. Yeah, and watch this left side over here. There's Hawkinson in there and Zlatnik. Good push at the point. And Sims does run, run through arm tackles. Setting up a third and six here. Ron, you know, they put it in the air. Do they think they're in four down territory? Can they run it twice? Run behind the senior there? They already have one field goal made today. Third down. They need six. Cummings will put it up. The pocket is collapsing. Throws complete. Short of the first down to Kale Pick. His first reception of the day. But now what do you do? Yeah. Well, I, the defense has played well. I, if you haven't, if you've lost as many games as they have in this conference on the road, I, I just think you take a chance here. I know, I mean, you're going to gain a few yards here right now in field position, but I think there's a whole bunch of guys in that Kansas sideline that was hoping Charlie would go for it right now. Well, instead, they're going to punt it as Doherty is standing back on his own 48, kicking into a stiff win. No rugby this time, and he gets it up in the air. Fair catch called for at about the 14-yard line by Alex Torres. So in the second half, both are like heavyweight fighters coming out and slugging it out. Still a four-point lead for Tech. Let's go, 21-17 is our score. Over 55,000 on hand today inside of Jones AT&T Stadium. That sets a new season average attendance mark. Over 57,000. 57,215 to be that's, exact. That's awesome. That's awesome. And credit to Tommy Tuberville, the interest that uh, he's created out here in Lubbock. I think uh, he's the guy that can turn this, continue to turn his program away around the way Mike Leach did. Deggy play action. Just dumps it off to the safety valve to Stevens. He gets close to the 25. They'll mark him down at the 24-yard line. Pickup of six on the play. Tharp on the tackle. I think we can call Tommy the High Plains Commander, as some people call him here in the Lubbock area. You know, Seth Dagan, what a story, though. I mean, he didn't play his junior or senior year of high school. Sat here his first three years, getting his opportunity these last two years. And, boy, has he made his mark right now in the last two seasons. An exceptional young man off the football field, too, Seth Dagan is. And he goes back to work. Second and short. That favorite out pattern they love to run with Jakeem Grant. He's fighting his way off five foot six, 163 pounds. Here's a guy that was 141 pounds when he came to Texas Tech. Oh, then he got on the training table, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really fatten him up. He's got the body fat of a hummingbird. I mean, I, I don't know where he put it. <laughs> he put on the freshman 15. Yeah, that's all the freshman was. 15. That's what he did. Well, he is fast. He's on motion. That time he goes in motion. Instead, they head it to Kenny Williams, and he blasts over the left side. Close to a first down, McDougal making the stop. Well, that time they used uh, they used Grant as a decoy underneath there. Look at Daigie, kind of like he's going to fake it to him. They've got some play actions and some trick plays. You're watching them yesterday in practice, Ron. Some designs that <laughs> you just wonder when they're going to pull these things out and do they have a possibility of working? Second down and very short. And they just run it with Williams. He's got the first down, keeps the feet moving inside the 40, down to the 38, and then things get a little chippy. Zala getting involved on the outside. Well, they have not run the ball well at all today. That's the first really good run, and it got him the first mm -hmm. down. Pickup of eight on the play. You can just feel when this offense isn't scoring points, they get frustrated. Right. And all of a sudden, they, they come off the bench, and it's like, it's like lightning. You know, striking out here. First and ten inside of 145 to play here in the third. Williams goes in motion. Deggy looks, throws. This is a double oh, pass. Yes. Deggy is open. He's got a convoy in front of him. Needs to get one block. He does. Gets inside the ten. Seth Deggy doing it all today. <laughs> we just talked about the trickeration. The plays that they practice, and that one was beautifully designed. The hit screen to Zuzalik right here. Here he is coming back, and now he's going to come around here and pick up a little bit of a convoy. Kip picks up a couple of blockers. Pretty patient with it. 
29 yards. Yeah. 29 yards. They should have looked behind him. Yeah. Well, if he's not throwing it, he's catching it now. You know, you can only do that out of uh, shotgun formation. You can't do that if he's underneath the center and throw it back to the quarterback. The ruling on the field of the runner being down is under further review. Well, the ball did come out. We mentioned that at the end of the play. Right. It spotted him down. They pointed to the ground that he was already down. Let's just take a look here as he finishes. Ben Heaney, the middle linebacker. Ooh. Uh, it looked like the knee was down, right? It looked Before like it started coming down. Better angle. Left knee right left there. Left knee's down. down. Yeah, left knee down. Ball not out yet. Good call. It's a bang-bang play. It's worth a review, but I think uh, Texas Tech will hang on to this ball. Nice job chasing it down by Heaney from the middle linebacker spot. You'll like to see a player like Ben Heaney, the sophomore out of Hutchinson, Kansas, who, who just never gives up on a play. No. I mean, he could have easily. They had the convoy in front of him, no. and he kept hustling. Here's the, here's the review. After review, the ruling is that the runner was down before the ball was loose. It is confirmed. First down. Well, to your point here, Ron, as Texas Tech hangs on to the ball now, you save a touchdown because of the hustle. Now, can you keep them out of the end zone here? Because this has been really the tough part for Texas Tech's offense. It was last week in that disappointing loss to Texas. Can they finish the drive right now? They are three and three for three in the red zone. Texas Tech is today. Kansas adding another player. That would help. Yeah. Having 11 does help. Yep. Yeah. Which is one louder than 10. <laughs> First and goal from the eight. Hanson gets this play. Maggie looks, throws, has a man incomplete over the head of his intended receiver, Darren Moore. Ooh, there's, a, there's a punch that was just thrown by Waddle, the left tackle. Well, that goes back to what was going on after the play to Seth Deggy, who was down. There was some pushing and shoving, some jawing going on down there. Yeah, but Ladron doesn't want to cost his team at this no. part of the field. You know, you you got to beef with the problem. You take it out to, on him during the play, but not after the play where you might cost your team 15 yards. Considering Waddle's probably one of their best, if not their best, offensive linemen at 6'6", 330 pounds out of Columbus, Texas. That goes back to work. Great job by the Kansas defense standing up Kenny Williams. Yeah, Jake Love on the tackle. Jake Love, just a redshirt freshman, took over for Tunde Bakare. Here he is, just trailing the play right now. Really good job because he was he had his first responsibility was the pitch. He saw the ball was handed off, then he squeezed it, caught it from behind. Third down and goal from the 12 now for the Red Raiders. Dengue looks, goes into the corner, looking, knocked away from Eric Ward. Now, how important was that hustle play by Ben Heaney? Big time. It's huge. Dengue going for his fourth touchdown pass of the day. Not a bad target there. And uh, Javon Bell. I don't think he would have been inbound. So, really, you save a touchdown and you force a field goal attempt. Goes back to being just a huge hustle play by Ben Heaney. Ryan Buston start of the year. Five for five on field goals. Only seven of his last 12. They're marking this at the 19-yard line, a 29-yarder. And it is good. So a great pass from Zuzalek to Dagey. But the hustle play by Ben Heaney kept Texas Tech out of the end zone, held him to a field goal. 28 seconds left in the third. Texas Tech leads it by seven. Twenty-four seventeen. just 28 seconds left to play in quarter number three, along with Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox, I'm Ron Thuman. Good to have you with us on this beautiful day in Lubbock, Texas. And our jack-in-the-box scoring drive. It took him just over three minutes to go 71 yards in nine plays. The field goal officially a 29-yarder. And that's why Texas Tech leads 24-17. Last time Kansas beat a ranked opponent on the road, 2007 now, five, over five years. It's the last time they were able to accomplish that. Down seven here. At the end of the third quarter, they got a chance. Pearson and Cox will not have a chance at that. 
Now tell us what you think and vote on the college football social poll of the week. Who's the biggest threat to Heisman frontrunner Colin Klein, A.J. McCarron, Kenyon Barner, Monty Teo, or Braxton Miller? Log on to Facebook.com slash Fox Sports to cast your vote. Poll results will air later today during our Fox College football doubleheader. Number 11, Oregon State. Taken on Stanford, followed by number two, Ryan Kansas State, battling TCU. What a great job Mike Riley's done at Oregon State, by the way. No question. One of the most underrated coaches you'll ever be around. Yep. I remember when he was there at uh, San Diego Chargers yeah. in the NFL. Just a uh, quality guy. Everybody really enjoys being around. Now let's see what Kansas could do offensively here as the third quarter nearing the end. Sims picks up three on the first carry, and that might be the last play of quarter number three. Just thinking about that last graphic we saw on the Heisman hopefuls, Monty Teo of Notre Dame undefeated only defensive player getting that kind of recognition be interesting to see if Notre Dame can stay undefeated and uh, what that might do for him a lot of those guys recruited by Charlie Weiss yeah. their career there. Well, Sims has 89 yards but as a kids play here in Lubbock we have 15 minutes left can Kansas break a huge conference win streak and upset Texas Tech We've got 15 minutes to find out the answer to that. Time for the Coors Light Freeze Cam. And of course, it was Military Appreciation Day. We had the flyover, the national anthem sung by some of the best men and women in our country. And a number of Air Force bases from around the area sent some of our service men and women. And on behalf of everybody at Fox, we want to thank all of you serving our country here and overseas. I just saw a great T-shirt commemorating our military here, Ron, and said, freedom isn't free. No. We pay a big price for our freedom to be able to enjoy college football on Saturdays, the NFL on Sundays, and just enjoying the freedom in this country. Well, you were overseas. You've been over with the troops. I've been over there on USO tours, and I got to tell you, just the conditions that our military have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is just worth the applause and the standing ovation that they just received inside the stadium. And, of course, Rocky Blyer also here today, the former Pittsburgh Steeler great. Oh, one of my favorite players of all time. Oh. I was born in Pittsburgh. I know you're from Pittsburgh, Ron. Yeah. You know, we were big black and gold fans growing up, and Franco and Rocky and that group. Bradshaw, I mean, it was uh, some team to cheer for as a kid. With apologies to Mrs. Cox, my English teacher. I did skip school and go to the Steeler <laughs> practice one time. To me, Rocky Blyer. <laughs> There's Tony Pearson left side, and he is going to be shoved back. Forward progress. We'll get up over the 30-yard line for a pickup of a couple. I think that's what this Texas Tech defense needs because Kansas has been doing a very patient and nice job running the ball. Well, you know, the one thing that this Texas Tech defense, although they've improved and all the stats are better, they don't take the ball away. Very few takeaways this year. That's a good hit, though, on Pearson. Just stopped him cold in his tracks. Only four turnovers forced the last five games for this Texas Tech defense. Since West Virginia, where they had a great game, they've only had two interceptions since then. This guy here, Will Smith, captain of the defense. Good linebacker. On third down, whistle flag. Nope, timeout called by Kansas. This is the first timeout of the second half called by Kansas. I think Charlie Weiss wanted to see how the defense was lined up and then choose one of those plays off his menu to attack it. When we come back, Kansas will be facing a third down and four situation from the 31-yard line. College football is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. As the players leave the locker room at halftime before a game, they touch the saddle. The saddle tramps. They dedicated the double T saddle, one of the many mass rider horses that probably served over the years. And one of the seniors, Seth Dagey, playing in his final game here in Lubbock. Cody Davis being the other. Right now, Kansas faces a third down and four from the 31-yard line. Cummings, rolling, looking, throwing, almost picked off, passes incomplete. Intended for Parmalee. That's one of the few times today there's been no run fake, just a pure rollout that time. Just a sprint right option. 
And really, Texas Tech did a good job of taking the options away for Cummings. Bruce Jones doing a good job on the coverage. Now Zuzalek standing alone on the about the 18-yard line. He backs up a little bit because Doherty once again punting into a big gusty wind. Upwards of 30 miles an hour. You can see the dust coming in. <laughs> it's coming this way. It's just a, an amazing sight. Doherty gets a good one. Zuzalek at the 21-yard line. Up to the 31. 2012 college basketball season tips off live from the flight deck of the USS Midway. Join Aaron Andrews, Steve Kerr, and Dick Enberg as Syracuse and San Diego State collide in a highly anticipated start of the season. The battle on the Midway live from San Diego tomorrow on Fox Sports Networks. Which the game was pushed back a little bit because the first date uh, was going to rain a little bit. They want to make sure they can do it on the deck. Rain on the deck. That's not good. I, I loved watching that last year. Phenomenal. 48-yard kick. Texas Tech takes over on the 31-yard line. Just a minute and three gone by here in the third. They just get a new play from the sideline. Changes it. Five-man pressure. Daggy steps up. Great patience in the pocket. Completes the pass up to the 39-yard line to Moore. Talk about that patience he had as the pocket looked like it was coming around him. Well, you know, the... the what he has is just poise. You know, I mean, you you know the pocket's collapsing. You're holding it an extra second longer. But just to be able to get the ball out to more like he did with something. Williams bangs his way up over the 40, close to the 45-yard line. First down, Texas Tech. You know, going back to Seth Daggy, obviously a coach's son, and you touched on it briefly about what this young man had to go through. I mean, he blew out his knee in 2006, his junior year, 2007. Yep. Mike Leach honored his scholarship. He said that's what kept him going. Then didn't play his first couple of years here as he redshirted and then stood behind somebody else. Daggy's pass complete. Into Kansas territory, Eric Ward with a reception. And Eric Ward, you know, they've got such a complement of receivers. Ward gives you that really fast, strong receiver. Ward gives you the height. If they had a Morrow in, they'd give a combination of speed, height. Peggy trying to get his hands on the ball. He has gone over 3,000 yards passing this year, or 300 yards passing today for the 17th time in his career. One of his favorite targets, Torres, on the reception. Well, for Kansas now, I mean, they have not been a good second-half team. They're into the fourth quarter right now. We'll just see what kind of conditioning, you know, what kind of endurance they have here to just continue to play tough and make Texas Tech earn everything they get. Right now, they don't, they're not playing like they look like they're tired. They, they nope. look just fine right now. Kenny Williams, he breaks the tackle. Still out of speed, gets close to the 30-yard line, another first down. Ben Healy, Healy again, also going to make the stop. Just looking at the right tackle, Terry McDaniel, a little slow to get up. Good tackle that time by Heaney. Sideline to sideline, leads this team in tackles. Pickup of nine on the play. From the pistol. Plenty of time to snap. They've got five on the play clock. Everybody moves to the left side, and so does Kenny Williams. The offensive line was completely in sync on that ball. Yeah, and you know, I said earlier that they throw the ball to run it. And what I mean is they've got wide splits in the offensive line. They get you thinking pass, 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 and then they crease you. Mm -hmm. with the run game. And right now in this drive, it's the first time they've really run the ball effectively today. That's what Dave Campbell was telling us the other day. He says, we can't play too soft on defense no. because they'll gash them with a the run. They've got good backs. Good first down play. They picked up five, second and five. From a little diamond formation, and they'll throw off it. Daggy looks, throws, has a man. Incomplete, out of bounds, intended for Foster. He had him. He had him on a wheel route. Foster coming out of the backfield. He's got him on uh, Patman in the corner. And Heaney was over there again. 
you see that he's going to try and drop this ball in right now, and Foster knows he's got to get that, yeah. get that right foot down. And it's third down and five from the 25. Kansas shows blitz. Here they come. Dangy reads it. The quick out inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. It's Tyson Williams. Well, you know, Dave Campbell, the defense coordinator, came after Daggy that time. Pressure right up the middle. Uh, here they are uh, coming up the middle. He's just going to throw this ball to the outside. Right. The climb. The place. Oh, what a great. First down. You know, he came in completing 69% of his passes. And you can see that that right there is an example of that high completion. Offsides by Kansas declined that time. First down on the catch by Williams. And Texas Tech can get a first down if they get inside the five-yard line. They're at the 15 now. Deggy looks, throws complete. Just a little pass thrown to Darren Moore. Does a nice job, gets inside the 10-yard line. Rick Brown on the coverage. You know, that Darren Moore, you know, he played at Blinn Junior College with Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. They were teammates there together in 2009. Moore now a senior, sticking it out. Of course, we know what happened to Cam at Auburn and Rookie of the Year in the NFL. Must have been some offense. Oh, potent. Ten different receivers today. Nine for Daggy. Daggy, of course, was on the reception of one. And E5, Daggy looks, throws into the end zone, incomplete. No penalty flag intended for Eric Ward. Good coverage by a number of Kansas players, including Tyler Patman. I thought Patman got there at the same time that the receiver did. I mean, I just thought this was good coverage. Brings up third down and five. The ball in the yeah, I mean, they both have a, a, a right to the football, and Patman went right through the receiver to get to him. Good aggressive play, and huge one right now for Kansas defense. Trying to keep this game close. Third down and five. They already forced one field goal attempt and make by Ryan Buston of Texas Tech. They need to get to the five yard line. Two to snap it. Daggy just gets it off. Looks, throws. Should have been caught in the hands and out of the hands of Eric Ward. I think that was the first drop I've seen today. I think you're right. I, mean, I don't remember another drop by this receiving court. I mean, here's Ward just running what we call an in-cut, a dig route. He slows down. He knows it's uh, it's going to be on his back number here, away from the defender, right where Daggy wanted Boom. to put it. That's why he allowed that ball to come in and hit his pad, bounced off the plastic. Now busted. Already with a 29-yard field goal made. They're going to mark this one at about the 17. It'll be a 27-yarder for the left footer. And he's got it. Good job by the Kansas defense holding Texas Tech on their last two drives to field goal. Can Kansas come back? The Sims connection, the Pearson connection. How will Kansas answer? We'll be back to Lubbock in a moment. Texas Tech, five for five in the red zone today. Three touchdowns, a couple of field goals. That's why they lead it by 10 with 10 12 to play in the ballgame. Pearson and Cox set to receive the kick once again, kicking into a stiff win. That win held it up. Big time. And it's going to be Taylor Cox. Looking for some running room. Nice return as he gets close to the 30-yard line. Let's take a look at our Coors Light game summary for today. Well, we said at the beginning it was going to be a contrast in style. So Kansas has run 41 times, only thrown at 12. Over 200 yards rushing right now. Texas Tech, just the opposite. 45 passes right now. Daggy, 365 yards throwing. Just six points scored here in the second half so far. Two field goals by, by Buston of Texas Tech. And so right now, Kansas with the wind at their back, and they take advantage of it in passing the football. A lot of time left, 10.06. They run the option that they've been running well today. Pearson breaks over in Texas Tech territory. He could score. Dragged down from behind in 
inside the five-yard line by Eugene Nebo. What a difference Tony Pearson can make. Getting him healthy right now. Just a quick option here to the left. I mean, here it is. You look at that little bit of a lane right now, and then bam. Put that foot in the ground, and now he's off to the races. Great hustle on the outside right here by Nebo to get him down to the ground and save the touchdown. 68 yards for Tony Pearson. His longest run of his career. And Kansas knocking on the door. Straight ahead running. Nothing doing by Sims. They need Pearson back in the game to run another one of those pitch options. Sims with 92 yards rushing. Pearson with 184. And he almost dropped this football. Well, let's just see. Oh, yeah, he bobbled. Yeah, he flat out bobbled it. And sometimes that happens down there in the goal line, Ron, where you take your eyes off and you want to see what the penetration is like. He did not look that ball into his hands and squeeze it. From the three. Wow. Touchdown, Kansas. <laughs> Who needs to throw the ball? No. Who needs to throw it with the wind at your back when you run it like that? Sims's second touchdown run of the day, all set up by Tony Pearson's 68-yard rush. Pearson with a career high, 184 yards, and he set up Sims to take it in. Now, we said that they had a lethal running attack. They've got two of the best runners in the Big 12, two of the best runners in the nation. And Prolago gets the extra point, and all of a sudden, again, it is a four-point game just inside of nine minutes to play. The Kansas defense has been the story. They've allowed the running combination of Pearson and Sims to explode against this Texas Tech defense. Plenty of time left. Sims cuts the lead, and it's 27-24 with 8.59 left to play in the game. Twenty-seven, twenty-four. here in Lubbock. Plenty of time left. Sedale Foster, Eric Stevens set to receive the kick. You just can't say enough about this Kansas defense, though. We'll be talking about them here in a minute. Oh, that's not what you want right there. Luckily, it goes into the end zone as we take a look at our brown hand center. Great hands of the game. And I think we have to give it to Mr. Sims. He almost caught this one up. Well, he bobbles it right now at the most critical juncture. Somehow he gets it back in all of that traffic. And then he gets down on a turn start. And then right after that, got a second crack at it. Good push right up the middle. There's Tanner Hawkinson leading him into the end zone. Those two backs feel pretty good next to each other. Pearson and James Sims having quite an afternoon. Well, Seth Tagge became the first Red Raider to pass for 300 yards in five consecutive games since 2008 today. He goes back to work. He's thrown one pick. Drops back, looks, throws, has a man wide open, caught inside the 50. It's Ward again. The former quarterback with a big game. So wide open on the play. Just see what, uh, there's Tyler Patman on him. Oh, yeah. The old double move and got out of his back pedal too soon. Turned him all the way around. 29 yards for Eric Ward. Four-man rush. Daggy saps it off quickly. Again, it is Ward. You know, these receivers get fed now. You mentioned that 10 different receivers today. Nine from Daggy. Oh, no, this ball was right in front of Charlie Weissy. That ball hits the ground. And moves. That's he's got his arm underneath it at the end. I guess they're not going to replay it. Nine receptions for Ward today. 34 the last four games. They go to the run game. Kenny Williams stood up. No gain on the play. Boy, nice play at the bottom of the pile that time. Good stop. I don't know if that was Josh Williams on it. Oh yeah, Agostino. Keep Agostino the backup defensive tackle. Just hanging on to that foot, not letting Stevens go. Now Texas Tech facing a third down. They need five. Kansas just rushing three. They're dropping eight here. Let's see what Tech does. Daggy's got some time. Looked at his safety valve. Kept it himself. Got the first down to the 30. And that's why they dropped eight. They weren't banking on Seth Daggy being able to run it. 
Now he feels pretty good. He's a good athlete, though. And he runs when he has to. But only a three-man rush. Everybody's dropping into zone. They take every all the receivers away. He goes, you know what? You're going to do that? I'll still I'll sting you. There. Yeah. Well, he's only rushed 26 times coming into this game for minus 23 yards. Most of those because of sacks, obviously. But it is a first down on the 31 now for Texas Tech. Foster. Cuts back. Nice move. Oh, he cuts it again. Wow. Two ankle breaking yeah, they moves. Were. And they got two defensive, two defensive players down the ground in Kansas. Tobin Apurum is down and now. I think it's Agostino who's still down. Yeah. Yeah, that's stop and start. He was lightly recruited out of high school. Sedale Foster was out of Riverside, California, J.W. North High School. And because of some injuries to running back is Charlie Ward getting on his team. He had a chance to really show his stuff in the spring. I think Charlie's saying that somebody cut blocked him. You know, and it's a low, you know, it's a low block. I didn't see it in the replay, but... We had just mentioned Key Bagostino making a, a key block right outside of Houston there from Katy, Texas. And here he is, right in the middle. Let's see what happens to him. Yeah, he, he got his own man thrown right into him. Yeah. Yeah, Porham fell right into him, but he got thrown into him. Now you hate to see that because the knee is just extended, it's vulnerable right there. But he is up, and Texas yep. Tech is moving. Ball on the 20-yard line, first and 10. Charlie Weiss's team, though, we, you know, we saw him against Texas a couple of weeks ago, and one thing that even Mac Brown told us after the game, he said, listen, you smack these guys, they smack you right back. Charlie's teams did not give up. Well, they've, done, they've had some really tough conference losses. Mm -hmm. to, like you mentioned, to Texas, to Oklahoma State, to TCU, where they kept the score down in all those games. And here is Daggy going to work. Dangerous pass caught. Good job by Grant to keep it alive. <laughs> Patman can't believe it. Well, there's Heaney again to finish that play, though. Patman had a chance. Oh, he had a chance. He read it perfectly. He jumped the throw. Look at how close that was going the other way now. Boy, look at Heaney coming and cleaning that up. That's a... You watch the end of the play, you'll see 31 for Kansas right there at the end of the play. He is a poster child for a hustle. Pass caught, spinning around, and it's Darren Moore. I tell you what, Daigie had some mustard on that because there were two white jerseys right there. Well, look at this throw. It's to his back shoulder here. Right? Well, look at that, how close wow. that was to Greg Brown. What a good job of sticky fingers by Darren Moore. A little wildcat action here for him. Day, he's, yeah, he's at the top of the screen. They go to Wildcat. This is going to be an interesting formation. They run it a number of different ways. Foster keeps it. Puts his head down trying to get the first he's down on third down and three. I think you're right. He's about a yard short. Yeah. Darius Willis of Kansas was right there. So, you're up three. Do you kick the field goal and go up six and still give Kansas an opening to score and win? What are you going for oh here? Okay, Coach. Yeah, Daggy's on the field. What do you got? What do you got for me, Coach? We're not good in short yardage. We may need a timeout to talk about. Well, play clock is now at 13. Daggy passing on the play to Eric Stevens will be next to him. Fourth down for the Red Raiders. Stevens. Barrels his way, and he will be awfully close. He needed to get down to the 10. Well, One official has it short. It looks short from here. I don't think we got it. Boy, was Seth Daigie the day he's having you decide to run it on that situation? That may be questioned. And Kansas has held yeah. them. Wow, what a lift. What a great job by the defense. Charlie can't ask for anything more from that, from that side of the ball. Look, they're up and they want this win. They, they can smell it right now. Huge stop by the Kansas defense. Texas Tech needed three. They got two and a half. Kansas with the football. Kansas trying to snap an 18-game conference losing streak. 
They haven't won on the road since 2009 in El Paso, Texas. And now it is up to Michael Cummings to try to break those streaks you see on the screen. Well, they have had an absolutely incredible job today of running the football. Oh, yeah. The big plays have come out of the run. Tony Pearson has been the big play offensive threat today. Runs of 49 and 68 yards have set up a couple of scores for Kansas. 452 to play in the ballgame. Right back to the run game with Sims. Right side, cuts over the middle. First down, close to the 30-yard line. Pickup of 19 on the play. Cody Davis makes the stop. Well, he's just cutting right behind. Right behind the right side of that line. Dent with a good block along with Zlatan. If they both get to the to the second level blocking linebackers. First and ten for the Jayhawks. Stick with what got you there, sure. Pearson. With more on Tony Pearson, here's Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, Ron, you know, we've seen Tony Pearson play a few times this year as he comes off the field. You may notice that that brace, that elbow brace he's wearing today, a lot lighter. The past few weeks, a much bulkier elbow brace. And I talked to him before the game. He says that makes a huge difference. Has a lot more feel in that arm. And it's shown today, guys. Well, absolutely. He broke it earlier in the ball game. They got it fixed up. Second down and six. This time over the right side, it is Sims, and he'll be two yards short of the first down. Clock inside of 345 to play. Now, they're moving the line of scrimmage right now. Oh, yeah. And I think the reverse, the fact that they've run the ball so effectively, I think they've worn down Texas Tech's front. They're playing too deep along the front now. Backup defense fan Brandon Jackson in the game. They've been rotating, but when you run the ball as well as Kansas has, I'd say Texas Tech's probably a little more tired right now. On third down and two. Tech stops him. Taylor Cox, nothing. Probably lost a half a yard. I don't think that Kansas can punt this ball away right now. Hyder at the bottom of that pile. Good push by Hyder right here, along with Bush. And they lost a yard, so it's fourth down and four. I think you're right. You can't, you've can't. you got to go. Now, you can't punt away to Seth Daigie in this offense. You may not get it back. It's fourth and four. What can Cummings do? Can the redshirt freshman make the play right here and keep their hopes alive? They're 107th on fourth down attempts in the nation. Here we go. They run the option. They've got the first down. And then some. Cummings, stiff arms inside the 30, down to the 20. What a run by Cummings. The longest run of his career. And he kept it. You have to honor. You've got to believe that right now he's as excited as he's ever been. Biggest play of his four-game starting career. Yeah, he keeps, he keeps it. They overplay it. They don't believe he's going to keep it. Charlie Weiss said he's not a great runner, but he certainly is effective, and you've got to honor him. Officially a 50-yard pickup by Cummings on fourth down and four. Straight up the middle. Inside, down to the 15-yard line. It is Sims. Two minutes to play in the ballgame. Think about this today. They've had offensive plays in the running game of 49, 50, and 68 yards. Yeah. Amazing. That's under the... Tommy Tuberville can't believe it. He didn't think that was possible. And we talked about the big plays that Texas Tech's defense has given up. Starting last week with Texas, they've given up a bunch today. Second down and five from the 15. A minute and a half to go. Pressure. Throwing end zone incomplete. Overthrown the intended receiver pick. First time they've thrown to Kale Pick today, the senior. Kind of surprised, to be honest with you, on second and five that you would even throw it. I mean, they've had such great success running it. Why wouldn't you just stay with it? Third down and five. 121 left. I think it's time for them to dust off the old read option. Let Cummings bring the defense to him and then pitch it. Two backs in the backfield flanking Cummings. 
Texas Tech stops him. Gain of about a half a yard. Big decision for Charlie right now. Do you go for the field goal? They're not particularly good at this. Or do you go for it on fourth down and try and keep your, your options of winning the game with the touchdown a lot? It is right in the middle of the field. Jeez. And I think they're going to go for it. Cummings bobbing his head. Charlie may need a little time to think about this. Nick Perlago has this made his only field goal off. attempt today. Once again, Pelago has hit from 22 yards. You talk about the close losses that Charlie Weiss has endured this year. Two of the eight losses, gut-wrenching. September 8th, Rice. Chris Boswell, a 45-yard field goal. The clock shows zero. Owls win by one. October 27th versus the Longhorns. Case McCoy hooks up with DJ Grant. 12 ticks were on the clock. The Longhorns win 21-17. Here's a great stat. Kansas has had the leader been within a single score in the second half in seven of their eight straight losses. Only exception, of course, that Oklahoma Sooner game, which Charlie says that was the only game we were really out of it. Yeah, and they actually played them tough in the first quarter. Got away. Kickoff return for a touchdown. A punt return for a touchdown. He's keeping the offense out there. He's going for the win. And Cummings will be flanked by Pearson on the left, Sims on the right. Okay. Now they just empty the backfield. Yeah. Cummings on fourth down. He's trying to draw him off sides. Try to motion him off sides. That didn't do it. And yeah, they'll call a timeout. Yeah. Okay. Now he's trying to get a free five yards. Not a bad little coaching move by Charlie. Well, that's their last timeout. 45 seconds to play in the ball game. You still go for it? I think you got to put your field goal kicker on him. I mean, right now you're looking, uh, Ron, you're looking at about a 33-yard attempt. This would tie it. Chance to maybe have to go to overtime. They haven't been in overtime. And he doesn't have, a, he's going to march him out there. I think you got to at least play for overtime at this point. Well, this will be a 32-yard attempt. His longest is 29. That was in the Texas game. He's Ball got is right in the middle of the field. Tailwind right behind him. He's dead center, right in front of the goals. The Lago for the tie. And he's got it. <laughs> Boy, the, wind, yeah, the wind took that from left to right. But we are tied at 27. 41 seconds to play in the ball game. Well, there was a little pressure to that kick. For Lago here, two field goals today. Charlie's in excellent fourth quarter right now. Ten straight points by the Jayhawks. Good operation, good snap, good hold. Looks like it's going right for the right, upright, and then it faded into the middle. Never a doubt, right? No, that, that, that was a PGA draw there, if I've ever seen it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Charlie takes a big sigh of relief because obviously he's special, clean again. Yeah, special teams have been a problem for him this season, but not today. As Perlago, two field goals made. Who would have ever thought that it'd be tied at 27? But you, uh, you got to go back to this Kansas defense. I mean, they, you know, they stop him on fourth down. Looked like Texas Tech was going to punch it in. Great job. Well, they, they've held him to two second half field goals. Remember, Heaney saved a touchdown on the throwback to Seth Dagey, just hustling. We expected a lot of balls being blown off the tee today. Up the 40 mile an hour gust inside Jones AT&T Stadium. There you see the flags even getting tattered. Yeah, and you know, when Texas Tech will get this ball, they're going right into that win, right into the teeth of it. Well, Prolago will give it a ride with the win. All timeouts remaining for Texas Tech. And it'll go out of the end zone. This, <laughs> yeah, this is the weather that used to see those tumbleweeds blowing yeah. through West Texas with. Well, Texas Tech, 41 seconds is not that difficult for them to score. But the Kansas defense has made it difficult for this talk Tech offense today. Tech with three timeouts left, however. Dagia Sr. would love to 
finish up his career at his home stadium. Next two games on the road. Last opportunity. We'd love to use these 41 seconds of three timeouts to win this one. Well, Seth Dangy goes to work. Three-man rush. Steps up. Throws it to his safety valve. Sedale Foster. He'll get the first down. The clock will stop with 33 seconds after a pickup of 14. Nice to have him. And they won't use a timeout. Clock stops, and now here they go. Again, a three-man rush. Dangy over the middle. Caught another first down. He dropped it. Incomplete. Yeah, that ball was, he had it in his hands, and then the hit dropped, uh, knocked it loose there. Clock stopped with 29 to play. Perfect throw. Right where he needed to put it. Brandon's had a big day, first touchdown of the day. Got it jarred loose. Diggy looks, safety valve again to Foster. And he'll wisely scamper out of bounds over the 40-yard line of the 41. And Pick Dave, up of only three. And, Ron, right now, Dave Campos doing exactly what he wants him to do. Keep throwing it underneath, throwing it underneath, check it down. Even with the timeouts, they're just bleeding the clock. Busted waits, but will he even be given an opportunity? Third and seven. Dagey with time, looks. The out pattern caught, running out of bounds, stopping the clock with 16 seconds left is Uzala. 14 on the pickup, 16 to play. Well, that's some throw, some throw, because oh. the accuracy allows Uzala to get out of bounds. It's so perfectly thrown. He can stay in stride and get it out of bounds. They still need to go about 25 yards to get in any kind of field goal range. Here comes more pressure. Deggy reads the pass caught, stepping out of bounds again. It's Eric Ward. Wow. 11 seconds. They are inside the 30. What, what a drive by Deggy. One perfect throw after another. Buston's longest is 50 this year. He's going to need... Who knows what that win's going to be doing if they attempt it. Well, and they're swirling all over the place. They got to get inside the 20 to give him a shot, I would think, with this win. 11 seconds to play. Deggy, low snap. Gets rid of it. Oh, 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 play by Seth Deggy to Tyson Williams. <laughs> oh, what a throw. Yeah, put that one on his resume tape. Oh, timeout. Texas Tech with six seconds left. Watch this again. Oh, my. He drops the shotgun snap from Gallington and then jump throws this ball to Tyson Williams. Oh, what a throw. He had a jump to throw it. He had a jump to dive to catch it. What poise. Ooh, Ooh wow. The knee was, looked like yeah, it was down. That but might, did, he, did he have possession of the ball? Oh, though, Charlie Weiss wants this reviewed, and he should. Oh, yes. Slow motion cameras may have caught that. All right, let's see. Knee is down. I think the right knee was on the turf. Now, well, let's see. The officials still on the field. Nobody's come over to look. Another look. Boy, his knee is down right there, but knee is down, and the ball is now up off the ground. I mean, well, here it is, though. All right. And now there they're probably going to review it. Previous play is under further review. And I think they've got something to review. Uh, they've got some evidence there. Hard evidence. Well, that will change everything. Instead of Buston kicking the field goal, which would roughly be a 37-yarder into the wind, they may push the ball all the way back, and Tommy Tuberville can only wait. Original line of scrimmage was the 33-yard line, which would make it about a 51-yard attempt if this is overturned. And I think there's pretty good evidence there that the right knee is down when he's picking that ball up. Yep. I think this angle right here kind of shows it. All right. Ball's up, and it looks like the right knee is still down.
doesn't take away from what he did after that. No, though. I mean, what a what a poised play, just to have the the wherewithal to do that. They are ready with the decision. I think you nailed it, Baldy. I think what they're doing now, I think the decision's already been made. They're probably making sure where the ball has to go back to now. Yep. On that last pass. Because the catch by Williams gave him a first down. So we think this is going to be over. This will be, uh, obviously, Seth Daggy's knee was down. That changes strategy. You try to just go for the field goal, the chance of it getting blocked. You throw it into the end zone on a Hail Mary. Or you just play for overtime. A couple of different scenarios to choose from. And the other thing is, you know, as accurate and as quickly as Daggy gets rid of the ball, can you afford one quick throw to the sidelines with six seconds? Maybe take four or five seconds off and get a little closer. And we understand now they're looking at the clock to make sure they've got the right amount of time. I think it was if it's just six seconds that remain, you would have a chance for one quick throw to the sideline if you wanted to try to get it closer. A lot of, a lot of uh, strategy all the way around. Now they have to find out how much time they're going to put back on the clock because it probably won't be six seconds. They'll have to put a couple more seconds down if indeed he was down, and we think he was. Which would give them at least another play. Right. They still have two timeouts left. So they could even throw the ball to the middle of the field if they put a few more seconds on the clock. Now, once again, we believe the decision has already been made. He is down. And Tommy Tuberville now faces a couple of different decisions. How much time will they put on the clock? Where will they put him down? <laughs> Got to get it right. That's why they're taking their time. And here we go. After further review, the quarterback's knee was on the ground when he picked up the ball. He will be down at the 38-yard line. Please place 10 seconds on the clock. Since Texas Tech called timeout at the end of the play, the play clock will not start until the snap. Well, Daggy's going back on the field. So he lost five yards on the fumbled snap. So the ball went from the 33 to the 38. So with two timeouts left here, Ron, you try and just get as close as you possibly can for a field goal attempt yep. right now. Now they put 10 seconds on yeah. the clock. It's 10 left in the ball game before overtime. The clock you see on your screen, that yeah. is not correct. It is 10 seconds left. We'll keep you up to date on the time. So you got time for a catch and a run. Get down, time out. You got a lot of options right here to get closer well there's one safety standing on the goal line for kansas daggy looks throws the deep out caught wow. with five seconds left ward climbs the ladder to make the catch how many catches for eric ward today none bigger than that one well he's the first red raider with 100 yards and receiving three consecutive games since a guy named crabtree in 07. <laughs> pretty good guy wasn't he not too shabby yeah. and now buston's going to come back out to kick the field goal with five Jeez. The wind again, about 35 miles an hour. They'll mark it at about the 31-yard line. 41-yard attempt for the win. Sliding to the side. Didn't get it. Fans thought it was good. Kansas going to overtime. The fans that were in front of us were all cheering, high-fiving each other, and the PA announcer said it was no good. Well, the, the, the snap, the hold, it was all good. These conditions out here. You got laces going to the goal post. Good operation all the way around. Buston, who'd been perfect today. Look, this kind of wins, you just don't know how to play it in this kind of win. He's disappointed, but conditions really had a lot to do with it. The fact he got at the distance is pretty impressive. You can see just, yeah. <laughs> just by that much. Once again, they played a triple overtime game. Texas Tech did to TCU back on October 20th. They won it in three overtimes, 56-53. Yep, and on that day, obviously kept TCU to six field goals in that day. Didn't give up the touchdowns. 
Jakeem Grant was one of the big stars of that game for Texas Tech had a big touchdown in overtime. Suzalek he had five big plays in that we'll TCU game. Point. This will be heads this will be tails Kansas you get to make the call. The winner of the toss gets to choose either whether they want to start on defense or offense. The other team chooses what end of the field will play on. What will you call me? Tails. Tails. Call us tails. It is heads. You have one to toss. You want to play defense. Which side of the field do you want to play on? You want to play on this end. Thank you. You guys will go on offense first. We've got overtime. Interesting that they want to play defense yeah. first. How about that? Charlie Weiss has rolled the dice. Will Texas Tech answer overtime in Lubbock? Straight ahead. Twenty seven twenty seven we are tied going into overtime coming up next of course Baylor at Oklahoma followed by Southern Mississippi at SMU but right now Texas Tech with the football or as you say Kansas with the football to start things out and they wanted the win hence the coin toss well look they win the Texas Tech wins the, the coin toss but they know if Kansas if they take the ball then Kansas is going to make it throw into the win. So they elect to play defense knowing Kansas is going to get the wind at the back and it favors a team that throws the ball as much as Texas Tech does. So that's what led to that decision. Very unusual to win a coin toss in overtime and not take the ball. Cummings runs the option again to Pearson. Left side inside the 10. Works his way down to the four. They cannot stop that play. That play has been their big play big time. this afternoon. I mean, it, Cummings does a great job of bringing the defense to him. You get Sims outside lead, with the lead block. You love to see that. Right now, Kansas is on pace to run for almost 400 yards today. That was their 43rd or 53rd carry this afternoon. four-yard line first down Sims nothing doing yeah that was Dartuan Bush just coming down closing down from his end spot putting the hit on him Texas Tech five and one versus Kansas and Lubbock the only KU win came in 2001 that was an overtime well, Sims dodged another bullet that's the second time he's bobbled the ball this close to the goal line. Now they brought in Jimmy Jimmy Mundine, the tight end. He's a good receiver, number 41. Yeah, right here. Second. Down on the five. Coming. Sees pressure. Throws it up. Touchdown, James Sims. <laughs> That's a nice looking play by Charlie. What an execution by Michael Cummings. And Sims has run through this defense in and around him all day. Catches the first touchdown here in overtime. Look at Sims is going to take this fake and then just continue on here. Nice play action fake. And Cummings has to jump that time in order to get rid of it. Jump throw by Cummings to get the first touchdown. Berlago with the extra point. So Kansas makes good on the first possession of overtime. Look at it again. Kansas takes their first lead of the day. This is what Cummings had to do. Had to throw it right in the lap of Dartuan Bush. And defender had fallen down. Sims takes it, flips it off. And Kansas now with 34 points, the most they've scored all season. And the numbers on Sims. Pearson, 15 rushes, 206 yards. The numbers for Sims, and they have helped Charlie Weiss put themselves in a position to snap an 18-game conference losing streak. And a road losing streak that stretches 18 games. Trying to knock off both those dubious records this afternoon. Deggie going to work. Bounces the pass in front of Eric Ward. Remember now, this is why they elected to defer after winning the coin toss so they could get the win. I don't think they were thinking that Kansas was going to be able to throw it for the go-ahead touchdown. 
Now the pressure is all on Texas Tech. Deggy from the pistol formation on second down. Play action, looks, throws deep, has a man, drags the foot. The officials say it was a catch. Wow. Inside the five-yard line, they're going to talk about it. Yes, it was a catch. Great job by Eric Ward. Did he drag the foot? Ooh. I don't know. Is that right foot out? Foot looks like it's on the line right yeah. here. And you have to, they're going to try and snap off a quick play, but Charlie's trying to get, get him to review it right now. And I think they did get the clock stopped. They got the officials' attention. The previous play is under further review. No, I think that's going to be overturned. They're going to bring this ball back. Sure looked like the one toe was on the white stripe of the sideline. In the air right now. Boom. Kansas will not be charged by the timeout. We will dance before the coaches challenge. Boy, that looks on the looks like that tippy toe is on the white. Yeah, now I don't know. Shoot, you're right. Left foot. From that angle, it looked like maybe it was in. They have had some tough calls to make. I wouldn't want to make them in real time. And I don't know if going back and reviewing it makes it any easier. Well, I'll tell you what, you look at the plays in this ball game that have turned things around. Texas Tech going for it on fourth down and three. They don't get it. Great job by the Kansas defense. Seth Day, he looks like pulling, he pulled a rabbit out of his hat. His knee was down. Yep. Coming at you in the, with this angle now. See, like that looks like it's on the strike. Left toe looks like. Ooh. Is it enough to turn it I around? I don't know. Like, because it looks like he's in, and then it's sort of. Then right there looks like it's not out. It's so close. You know, the evidence has to be really conclusive. You stop that, slow it down, back it up, blow it up, all the things you can do with a camera. <laughs> it just makes you kind of scratch your head if if you're going to overturn this. I, I can't tell from here. I don't want to make the call. Kudos to Charlie Weiss and his team and Dave Campo, defensive coordinator. We'll try to blow it up a little bit here. Okay, and let's blow it up. The magic of television, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Don't try this at home. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, is that boy. the eye test right there? Is, is that all green? Is there... The tippy toe. Ugh. Kansas has so much on the line right here, depending on what happens on this call. Gosh. You talk about a game of inches. That's not even an inch. That's less than an inch. Well, the officials still on the horn talking upstairs to a booth just to our left. What do you think, Ron? I think he was out. Yeah. Okay. How about you? Hmm? Looks like there's some white stripe. It's come white stripe there, which would nullify the catch and back it up. You know, when he first I'm with you. My first reaction seeing that angle yeah. was that his, his toe's out. I thought he dragged his foot when I first saw the catch. It looked like he was setting up to drag it, but I got a feeling Tommy Tuberville is going to be very disappointed in this call. Now the dust is... Moved right over the stadium. No sun coming through right now. You can see the wind off the shirts. Kansas scoring on the first possession of overtime. These are two of the longest replays I've ever seen in college football. It's right here in the I think couple you're right. minutes away from each other. But they're just that close, and you want to try to get it right. After review. The receiver's first foot came down out of bounds. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. The ball will be placed back at the 25-yard line. It will be third down. Third down, and now the wind is really getting crazy. It is It is swirling. Yeah. You look from one end to the other, and it's blowing different directions. Yeah, don't look, any flag you look at, it's blowing in different directions. Now that, Coach Tuberville, third down. They need to get down to the 15-yard yep. line. 
Well, you're obviously, you've got two downs to get it here, so you don't have to get it all on third down. Good point. But they've got to score a touchdown or this game is over. Diggy has passed for 400 yards, the fifth of his career. Here comes the blitz. Diggy over the middle, has a man caught. It is Ward. Reaches for the end zone. Wow. We'll wait for the official signal. They're saying he's down at the one. What a catch and run by Ward. What a day. Rolling on the field as the runner is short on the goal line. First down. Well, I tell you, no pressure in Seth Daigie's arm. I'll tell you that. Ooh. Look like his legs were Boy, the, gone. It looked like his legs never went down. No, and the, and the crowd just saw it on the jumbo yeah. trying. They're going to have to, gotta, gonna have to look one. at this one, too. <laughs> Tuberville, <laughs> Coach Tuberville out on the field, and they yeah. will review it. No, that was an effort. That was a great effort by Ward. Jeez. And the fans, they, they, <laughs> they've already decided. Yeah, they saw enough. Boy, what pressure. Right, here it is. What an effort right here. Those out, legs are not Texas down. The hand Burton doesn't put it down. Spot. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. Ball's, ball's short of the goal line. Ball's short of the goal line. No question. I think they got it right. There it is. I think people were looking at that left yeah. hand. Yeah, no, the hand doesn't get you in. The ball's got to cross the plane. And this ball is down right there. This is, this is called correctly. Eric Ward has passed a career high in receiving yards. He's got 161. He set his own mark at K-State this year. That was enormous for Eric Ward. This could very well be his 22nd touchdown catch if they overturn it, but I think they're going to put him down inside one. Remember, last year, all kinds of difficulties, or last week against Texas, all kinds of difficulties. Eric Ward would score. 12 catches today, and to put that in perspective, first five games he had 22 receptions. The last four, 37 receptions. He has stepped up his game. Here's the ref. What's the call? After review, the runner's arm with the ball was down short of the goal line. The call on the field is confirmed. First down. <laughs> <laughs> you knew they were going to like the call. I don't think anybody wearing black and white is yeah. going to get a Christmas card this year. That's just a guess. Hey, you know what? They're getting it right, though. Absolutely, they're, they're, absolutely they're right. getting it right. How about that for Eric Ward? What a great job he's done. 180 yards, breaking his own mark. Yeah. Yeah, here's Daggy down here. So they've got their Wildcat offense on the field right now. Kansas trying to get adjusted. They're not lined up correctly. And Stevens is running it. And he keeps it. Up on the top. <laughs> Texas Tech has scored. His 20th career rushing touchdown does it in overtime, but the extra point still to come. I don't know if Kansas was ever set. But regardless, Stevens was going airborne no matter what. A little pressure on this kick. Erks Laban, the holder. Bustin for the extra point. And the tie. And we are headed to the second overtime. <laughs> Knotted up at 34 in overtime. Number 22, Texas Tech. Getting everything they can possibly want from Kansas. And those fans have been entertained. The ones Absolutely. that have made, uh, made this trek. Coming oh, yeah. up next, of course, we got the Oklahoma Sooners and the Baylor Bears and Southern Miss. They'll be taking on the Mustangs of SMU from Gerald J. Ford Stadium in Dallas, Texas. We'll keep you posted on that Baylor-Oklahoma score as they have already kicked off. That has a chance to be a lot of fireworks. Oh, boy. We saw that Baylor offense last week now. They can move the football. So we are in the second overtime. In case you just joined us, the game, the tempo was set at the beginning. Both teams scored on their opening possession. Then Kansas or Texas Tech seemed to take control of the football game. <laughs> then it just went away. Then the Kansas defense just stood up tall and kept pushing Texas Tech back. 
Charlie just took a little glance at the at his menu, see what he could get. And now Texas Tech with a football at the 25 yard line. Second overtime period for Tommy Tuberville and company. It took him three to beat TCU earlier this year. Daigie sets up the little screen pass to Foster. He's got running room. Cuts back inside, inside the 15, down to the 14. That's the play that they wanted to open the game with. That's, That's a little, exactly right. little screen to Foster. They didn't actually throw it that time, but nice job of just getting really their returner out there in space. Kit pick, picking up a quick first down for him. Great job by Ben Heaney again on the tackle. First and 10 from the 14. Deggy, the quick toss to the outside. Down to the 10 yard line, a pickup of five on the play. Darren Moore on the reception. You know, these Texas quarterbacks, they have these seven on seven competitions in the spring in high school. And that's what Deggy looks like he's running. It looks like a seven on seven <laughs> drill. You're right. You know, and it's like, okay, five wide receivers, let's run this combination, you know, against the secondary. Let's keep score. It's huge in Texas. And that's the exhibition that Deggy looks like he's putting on here today. Zalek now comes in and he goes to the right side. And goes in motion. Deggy hands it off. Foster straight up the middle. Inside the five. That'll give him first down and goal from about the three and a half. But well, he is a blur. He is quick. Underneath handoff right now. Here he comes just underneath. Just a quick little handoff. Fake the jet screen. Ben Heaney. I don't know how many tackles Ben Heaney has. I mean, he's got to have probably close to 15 or 20. I'm telling you, this young man, I, I'm, the, I'm the president of the Ben Heaney fan club right I'm, now. I'm with you. I'm, I'll be the vice president. Total hustle plays by Heaney today. This kid has given everything he's got. They say officially he's got nine tackles. Seems like more. Now they run the Wildcat Stevens. again with Stevens. He throws it. Caught. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Jeez. They got a few gadgets. They got a few gadgets. They just pulled one out that time. I don't think anybody thought Stevens would ever throw the ball in that situation, but what a time to pull it out and execute it. Darren Moore on the reception. We saw them run this and walk through yesterday. They said, well, we'll use it if we get to second overtime. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we'll get the jump throw. Pretty good catch, though, by Moore. That's oh, fingertip is, city there. He had to stretch out to get it. All six foot four. Had to go up high to get it. And for the extra point. And now it goes on the Kansas offense shoulders. Darren Moore with the touchdown reception, his second of the ball game. From behind again. It's one thing to have this play. It's another thing to execute it. When you absolutely have to execute it. The old autogram jump throw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell you, that's a tough play to defend. I mean, you know, Kansas... I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they haven't seen that on film, but nice job by Stevens. He scores the first touchdown in overtime. And then he throws for the second touchdown in overtime. And amidst all of that, we have an Otto Graham reference. And yeah. those of us that grew up there, we know who it is. Oklahoma has already scored on Baylor 7 nothing in the first. When our game gets done, we'll ship you over to Norman, Oklahoma. But now it goes to the Kansas offense. Sims and Pearson in the backfield with Cummings. These two backs have been sensational today. Sims cuts back. Stop. Picked up two. You know, they've had a horrible day stopping the run. They've given up almost 400 yards rushing. But if they can stop them on this drive, it won't make any difference. That's right. No style points in football. No style think. points here, Ryan. You got to go to a second overtime to get yourself another conference win. You'll do it. Second and eight. The option comes Keeps. Picks up maybe two more. And they finally took the option pitch away. I mean, Cummings wanted to pitch it, but they, they had a man for it. I mean, there it is. There's the pitch. He's playing it all the way. 
Good job by Jackson Richards on that. Yeah. And here it is, third down and five. They'll run the option. Texas Tech is all over it. Fourth down, Kansas. They'll need nine. Obviously a huge, huge stop by the backup middle linebacker, Blake Dees, on the play. I think they've seen this, this option read a few times now. They've had great success to Pearson with it. I'm a little surprised they ran it to the short side of the field and didn't run it, you know, all the way to the wide side. But Dees went low, wrapped him up, brought him down in the open field. Kansas with the timeout to talk about it. Well, the Kansas fans, I'll tell you, you've got to be proud of your team today because they have laid it all on the field. Now they left all here. Tobin Aporum looks on. Had a great game defensively. Timeout is called. It'll be fourth down. Officially, it is nine for the first to keep their hopes alive. Dees with a huge play. The sophomore out of Spanish Fort, Alabama. Tommy <laughs> Tuberville. <laughs> Strike up the band, Tommy. <laughs> and here we go. Kansas What's, back out on the field. What's Charlie got in this situation? We just saw a jump pass for Texas Tech to score. What's Charlie got to answer it here on fourth and nine? Texas Tech still putting players in, trying to get the right defense. Pete Robertson has come in for them. Watch Pearson in the slot. Now Pearson moves over, sends to the right of Cummings. Penalty flag is thrown. Cummings looks for the end zone. Batted away, but we do have a penalty. There is a penalty flag. Will it be holding against Kansas? If so, the game is over. There's three flags out there on the field. There's an illegal shift on the offense for the play is not being set. Penalty is declined. Game is over. In double overtime, Texas Tech is able to fend off the Kansas Jayhawks, 41 to 34. Charlie Weiss's squad has done everything possible in this football game. Baldy, they played well. They played great. They, uh, they gave it everything. I mean, Charlie's got to literally go in there and wrap his arms around those kids and just say, man, thank you for the effort today, guys. Our what a burger, what a player has to go to Seth Daigie, the Texas Tech quarterback. Oh, great numbers. Unbelievable. I tell you what, seeing him live now, it's one thing you watch him on tape, you watch him on TV, you see him live, you see the poise, uh, just the leadership. What a tremendous afternoon for Seth Daigie, his last, last game here on his home stadium. So that's it from Lubbock, the final score, 41-34. Up next, we'll take you to Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners host the Baylor Bears, then Southern Miss and SMU. For Brian Baldinger, Jim Knox, our entire crew, Ron Thulin saying so long from Lubbock, Texas. Baylor, Oklahoma is next. Stay with us for more college football on Fox Sports Networks.